Oh, hey, I was muted, Duncan, on the stream. <laughs> hey there, everybody. Welcome back to Duncan and Bo Come Correct. I, of course, am America. Uh, Bo Ransdell. Uh, with me, as always, the the lovely, the the talented, uh, the 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 strong jawed uh, Duncan McLeish. How are you doing, buddy? I'm just going to stay like this so you can breathe and drink in the profile of my strong jaw. I, I, I mean, I would love to live in a world where America was at sometimes just muted, <laughs> like accidentally. You know, I, oh, I can't take, why can no one hear us? Oh, wait one second, that's right, because we had the mute button on. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, <laughs> it's same for us. Um, we, I don't know if you heard Duncan. And and by the way, just in in the spirit of uh, of what's been going on in this country, I would like to take this opportunity um, to pardon myself for anything that happens on this show that might be offensive to some, might be I don't know, questionable, or or just not funny. Like I mm. I I can take absolutely no responsibility for any of that because I'm pardoned. <laughs> diplomatic community <laughs> so i will say this you know, the, the one thing that dbcc will guarantee is that we do not guarantee that this is fun right? no so... <laughs> but look at this brand action going on duncan official legion cup if you're listening to this on audio by the way the, you can of course join us for uh the video portion of this this is our our test run uh yes for episode one of uh, Slasher is what we're do doing. This season, Duncan, we're calling it Duncan and Bo Slash Fiction because there's plenty of that out there. The <laughs> so I've been told, I, I can, I'll be, I'll be hand, hand on heart here, I have never read any Slash Fiction at all, so um, I'm aware of the concept, wow. but I've never seen the point. And like, like, and like to me, I, I don't want to read... It's the same where, like when uh, Frank Herbert died, um and his son continued doing the Dune books, and I was like, "That you're not your dad," and I, I don't dispute that they're probably amazing, but you're not your dad. So why would I? Why would I want to? Like, it comes from one mind. Had it always been a collective thing, then yeah, that's cool. But it's different with Twin Peaks, where you've got David Lynch and Mark Frost, the conjoined entity that brings that forward to the fold, and then Mark Frost can go off and write his books. David Lynch can go off and direct his stuff. But, you know, I mean, they created the world, so that's fine. But slash fiction's always been a little bit, what are they doing? <laughs> don't know. I don't know. I don't know where we're going with that. This is the long intro that Bo usually brings in when I see something silly. Yeah. Uh, which could have been any any of the words mentioned before the point he said, yeah. <laughs> no, I look, uh, it, it, like I said, this is our first episode, so I'm also like guiding people to the stream like moses duncan yes guiding them to to the show yeah. um he parted the stream as well didn't he <laughs> i did moses did no that was no no moses did yeah yeah that's right yeah i don't know I, i'm a i'm a heathen <laughs> uh yeah i know so very very little about yeah. <laughs> um what the kids call uh the religion <laughs> <laughs> what the kids call the religion. Yeah, you know, because kids famously love God in Jesus. They um, do. They do. At least all the, I, all the I, girls in my high school claim to. <laughs> Only the I good die young, you son of a bitch. Uh, I, I um, also am a firm fan of the God and the Jesus when used in conjunction with sweaty words. <laughs> sure. Uh, the... Um, I, have have you seen the the Netflix history of swear words? Have, have, have not have, yet, okay. not yet. I'm very excited for it though. The trailer, I mean, the fact that Nick Cage is in it. Yes, yes, I want to yeah. watch that. Uh, but you know, just the whole concept, I, I looked outrageous, and then the trailer dropped, and I was like, "This is the thing that I need in my life for 2021." It's yeah, the the um the three or uh, four episodes that I've caught so far, and they're about 20 minute episodes. They're they're pretty breezy watches. <laughs> But it's exactly what I hoped it would be, which is this is um, basically Nicolas Cage hosting the show, like from a very like uh, nice like study kind of thing. <laughs> of course, and uh, 
<laughs> but but they intercut like actual like comedians and experts like uh, etymologists and stuff like that who are like oh, this is where this word came from here's how the meaning changed over the years here's what it means now and and then you have some comics that they go to that are you know like oh yeah I I love the word pussy you know stuff like that. <laughs> So it's a little classier than that, but not much. And the the, the great thing about it, Duncan, we're, we'll get into the goods and bads in a minute, which is the thing we do on the show. We're not we are not mm-hmm. even done with the introduction. Get, just put put your fucking pants on, people. I don't care if it's video <laughs> or not. We're gonna do the regular show, um, which includes a lot of tangents and wasting everybody's time. All the time shall be wasted. <laughs> so you you it's very much very much like Hellraiser here. You open the box by clicking the link, and now you will suffer through everything that happens yeah. until we are done with you. Yes, we we will tear your morning apart. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's starting early. Um, so, uh, well, oh yeah, yeah. What I was going to say that uh, the thing that makes it great, uh, the, or as far as the Nicolas Cage portion of it. I really like the fact that occasionally Nicolas Cage just lets Nicolas Cage out. Well, he has to. Otherwise, why would you have him on? You wouldn't bring him in to be all serious and straight. You need the moments where he's just like, fuck! You yeah. know, you're like, yes, yes, that's what I want, Nicolas Cage. <laughs> I think it was the, the bitch episode um, where he has a real good, like, bitch! And it's yeah. kind of out of nowhere. You know, he just, like, as he's saying the word, he'll just put a little English on it. It's, mm-hmm. it's pretty good. It's it's good uh, It's good Nicolas Cage stuff. So, um, yeah, like I said, the, it's Duncan and Bo slash fiction is, is the name of the show. Um, we, uh, we've talked about this before, but I guess the long story short is, hey, we, I had started watching the show Slasher. And yeah. I was like, Duncan, this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> and and you need to watch it. And I was doing it for our Patreon commentary. And uh, and I had to pull the plug on it. To all our good patrons, all our good Legion patrons, I was just like, fuck you guys. We're doing it as a regular season show. And then we're doing other stuff over there. It's fine. It's fine. Mm. Everybody's getting good stuff. Um, <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Shut up, Duncan. Um <laughs> I love that you watch something really bad and your first instinct is Duncan should watch this and well, we should do a show about it. Yeah. We should commit a sizable portion of our life moving forward to talking about this. To, yeah, I love right. that about you. For, <laughs> yeah, for a show that I had seen all of two episodes of <laughs> and still have only seen two episodes of, but I was I was so genuinely excited by it. I mean, it was so, it was so ridiculous, but in, to my credit, Duncan, you watched the first episode and were like, mm, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 100% yeah. we're going to do this. Yeah. If, if, if like, I got, if there's a, I think, I don't, I don't even think I got in as far as, like, the first 10 minutes of the show. Like, after the, the kind of opening set up and then the actual premise of, and we'll, we'll get into it, but the actual premise of a character returning to a place, but not only to a place, to a house, um, and the most ludicrous setup ever. I was like, "This is hot garbage," and then it just continued to become everything that I wanted it to be in the realms of hot garbage. So, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking for. I think if there's if there's any two individuals out there that can bring a, a degree of enthusiasm to something that should not merit it, I mm-hmm. think it's yourself and myself. So, welcome, dear listeners. I, I and think. Viewers. I think that's accurate. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, like it's it, it's a truly, truly bad series from what we've seen so far. Yeah, from only two episodes. Well, you're two episodes. I'm one episode. Right. So I've seen that first one. Watched that again last night, um, and it finished, and I was just like, 2016 as well. Yeah, it's not right. Right, people ought to have known better. Duncan. Yeah, it's five five yeah. years ago, and we're about to get a season four. So right, and which is uh, yet another reason we're kind of doing this is because David Cronenberg, the D Crow, is gonna <laughs> be D Crow is gonna be in the new season of Slasher, and I, I mean, how do you say no to that? I didn't know he was in Star Trek. He's in the new Star Trek or something as well, which I did not know about. And I was like, "That this is why he's not making anything at the moment." The, he's wait, the new Star Trek movie or no, the, the, the TV, the TV show is it Discovery or whatever it's called? He apparently is in that. I have no idea. I have no clue. I don't know. 
Yeah, I didn't know. Like, it listed out. Um, There's an article recently about him talking about how he wants to return to doing movies. He's got apparently about two or three projects he's currently working on at the moment in the background, but also um, he's been he's been enjoying his time moonlighting as a bit of an actor. Uh, and I listed out some of the stuff he'd done recently. Some of the things I'd never heard of before, and they seem like small cameo parts, but uh, Star Trek was one of them, and it just uh, kind of kind of floored me a little bit, because uh, I used to watch a lot of Star Trek. I kind of stopped probably in line with when Voyager finished. I didn't really do anything beyond that. So I didn't watch the Enterprise show with Scott Bakula or uh, this Discovery show, which is on what, it's second or third season now, I think. Um, I didn't do any of them, mostly because I, I just don't have the time. But like that would that would certainly bring my interest back um, just to see, even, just even if there's someone out there that could super cut all the Cronenberg clips, that would make me a happy man. It'd save me having to watch and try to remember other character names. So, I yeah, I like my Star Trek knowledge is pretty limited. Like we've talked about this before, but I did that. Here's how you watch Star Trek in 40 hours, kind of thing, yep. or the Next Generation, and uh, and so I did that. So I I feel fairly conversant in next generation stuff and original series stuff a little bit yeah uh mostly <laughs> mostly just because i like we hate movies and they've recapped a lot of those original uh series shows oh right have they ever done deep space nine because deep space nine's the best uh, see that's a that's the thing and it's the luxury of not giving a shit about these shows until long after they've <laughs> stop producing them <laughs> is like you, people like you come along and you're like no 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 man ds9 is the good shit so yeah i'm i haven't watched all that but i i've started it and just fallen off for one reason or another but i'll get back it to starts it. off really slow they find the grit like starts off kind of middling um with no real sense of direction for like the first like two seasons and then when the dominion start getting involved that's when it gets really fucking good and then it really leans into um like a trust like it, they, i was gonna say parody it's not parody but they um they essentially highlight uh some of the past atrocities of this planet <laughs> uh, specifically through things like vietnam there's an episode which is very much like vietnam there's an episode there's ho the whole season which is basically like um the nazi occupation of europe but done through uh cardassians which are really are just like giant lizard nazis so um it's, it's, really, it's, it's really it's really giant lizard nazis is a nice turn of phrase by the way yeah it's, it's also the name of my new punk band coming 2022 um when, it, when the dust is settled that's also the name of the ep <laughs> so uh... I, I like it doing a, a kind of a big country thing with it where it's like <laughs> big country the song big country on the album big country by the band big country yeah, if you're going to go in for it, go for it. You know what I mean? Just, that's that's how you pound the message home. <laughs> you know what I mean? You just make sure that everything is just simple to remember. Yeah, yeah. Pounds. That's what I like. Pounds. Pounds. <laughs> Pounds, baby. Pounds. Uh, Pounds. So uh, what we do around here, folks, is we, we begin the day by talking about uh, the day, the show. Jesus Christ, it's early. Um... <laughs> We start the. I, I I had too much to do too early, and now it feels like it is you know a million o'clock. Yeah, um, the cocaine's wearing off. So oh <laughs> yeah, that's another problem. Here's here's the thing they don't tell you about cocaine. As soon as you do some, your first thought is, I probably need some more of this. Yeah, uh, let's 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 line up. Uh, can we talk about that on streaming channels? How great cocaine <clears throat> is. I, but I, can we be pro cocaine? I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't right. know what's acceptable or, or anything. I, I will just, I would just tell anyone that's watching that may be related to me or know me. Like, I've never done cocaine. Um, I have. It's great. That's a good disclaimer, isn't it? That's yeah. that's who you, that's put them off a scent, bro. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what this asshole did. <laughs> <But> <laughs> this one did a little coke when he was in college and it was great. Um, not, not in a long time, but oh, yeah, because it was great. You gotta stop. Like that's one of those drugs that as soon as you take it, you're like, "Oh, I can't do this again." Like <laughs> this could be a real problem. I'm having a good time. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Oh. You know, moderation in all things, especially moderation, as yes. uh, Oscar Wilde said. Mm -hmm. um, no, what we do on on the show here 
is we do, uh, first of all, we talk about a movie that we have seen since last we spoke. One good, one bad. Um, we don't want to just shit on a movie, but sometimes you gotta. <laughs> and it's not not because I want to. I don't feel good about it. No. Sometimes I feel good about it, like today, when I shit on the movie. I'm going to talk about it here in a minute. Oh, but, <laughs> but first, Duncan, I would like to hear from you, because I've done a lot of like best of viewing and stuff like that, so I'm, I'm curious to hear from you uh, what one of your good or one of your bad is, your dealer's choice. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm the same as you. I officially put out my top 20 of 2020 um we'll be dropping this coming monday so i've just finalized my list as of last night uh did the last two viewings um on titles that were you know getting bandied about as you know these are the ones that you really should spend your time tracking down and checking out before you move and to to do your list so I, i've been doing a lot of that i'll be honest with you I, i'm maybe not as hot on what has been getting a lot of the traction um on on some of the streaming sites uh which is kind of i don't know it's not not necessarily a bad thing but like just like certain movies where i can clearly see why people are very excited about them but i myself um kind of stripping back some of those elements just see a very rudimentary kind of horror movie yes well constructed but nothing like spectacular so i think my list may shock some people in, in those realms. Um, I haven't actually seen anything bad, if I'm honest. Um, I, I will swing... What I decided I was going to do on this one is I was going to speak about something that I thought was kind of awesome. Uh, and one that I know that I'm slightly hotter on than you, that you've mentioned before as a way to generate conversation. So I've come in, you know... For, for a bit of lively debate here so we'll do the that title first so the title that i liked more than you i still don't think it's a great title by any stretch of the imagination but i certainly from our conversation liked it a lot more than you did is freaky with vince vaughn mm, yeah I, I i don't dislike that movie at all i i, yeah. think, I think it's a totally fine movie yeah i'm um, i thought in parts it was everything that i'd hoped it was going to be and more actually in a lot of respects everything i was kind of hoping a uh, happy death day was going to be even though i really like happy death day uh, this one's a bit a bit gnarlier on the kills if you know what i mean for sure <laughs> yep, yep yeah yep. some really good gore in it for sure yeah which i kind of hoped you were going to get in happy death day happy death day to do to you completely different i mean i understand they're going for that kind of kitschy 80s you know, kind of back to the future, time travel sort of thing, which, you know, all the, the tonal shifts and all that completely make sense from that one. But the original one, I was expecting a bit more. But yeah, I think the performances are really good. I think the the kills are excellent. I think it's as big as crime is that because it emulates things that are so well established in the, in the kind of zeitgeist of pop culture, it is a wholly predictable movie like from start to finish like you know exactly when the movie starts you know exactly how it's going to finish um and you just kind of have to to roll with that but the journey to that end point was enjoyable and entertaining enough so i mean it will feature in my top 20 i don't i can't see it cracking my top 10 um but i i, I did enjoy it. i think he's a i'm very much kind of with you when you were saying on our previous recording that you feel that he he clearly knows how to combine slasher elements with kind of pop culture elements that we know in genres of movies that we grew up watching if you're of my age or Bo's age um he, he really he really knows how to meld them together and and make a surprisingly entertaining movie out of it and yeah I do kind of like the idea of him going off to do something out with that but also like my, my concern is having seen this is that maybe that's that's his trick like some directors only right. have like one really good trick and everything else is mediocre and i think we at times maybe don't acknowledge that with certain directors so we want them to keep pushing the boat and keep growing and certain directors are you know capable of that growth and others aren't um, I think M. Night Shyamalan is the greatest example of that. I think M. Night Shyamalan is at his truest strengths when he's playing 
with smaller, well, I say smaller budgets, like, you know, 20, 30 million uh, dollar budgets and nothing, writing. Nothing, Duncan. Just a few, <laughs> you know, a few bucks. <laughs> you know, well, you compare it to how much fucking the last Avatar cost. Of um, course, yeah. You know what I mean? Like when he's when he's playing with those budgets, and I think on some level he has a bit more control over the work he's doing. I think he makes a really interesting movie. I think when he's playing with a lot bigger budgets and there's a lot more involvement, I think that's when he just proves that he can't... I, I don't think he's very good at saying no. Um, and as a result, his movies turn out very messy and and kind of... And like, or when, when you're surrounded by people that are yes people, and I'm like, yeah, so the spoiler alert here, you know, the village actually exists in the modern day, but they just don't know about it. Um, huh? Oh, man, I, like, I, the village yep. is... Yeah, like, like everyone around them is like... Fucking genius, M. Night. Fucking genius. But it's, it's clearly like someone should have just sat there and said, Have we pushed this six sense twist too far? <laughs> can we maybe, can we just like, can we just rein it back a little bit? And I think that's, I think that's my concern is like this guy, clearly a great director in the slasher kind of slapstick horror comedy environment with that mixing of the kind of pop culture elements. I think he's great at that. I think there's also still some areas in there that you can mine a bit more but I mean until we see that movie out with that we won't know but my concern is that you know what, what does that look like if it's a non-slasher movie right um, and what does that look like when he maybe tries to make something a bit more straight laced how's that going to look how's it going to play out and I, I don't know I don't know just because I think there's a misconception that just because you can do and I understand why it is is there just because you can do like horror comedies you should be able to do straight out comedies or straight out horrors and that's not the case um because you can balance those the balance is very difficult to get but being able to deliver an out and out comedy or an out and out horror uh, off the back of doing a straight horror comedy is not easy um so yeah i don't know i don't know i i, I thought it was very entertaining and enjoyed it quite a bit uh, and once again just remind me that vince vaughn is they should, like, I'm, it blew my mind that that was really out with the Psycho remake, which we've all rightly tried to purge from our minds. I think this is his only horror credit. Um, um No, he did that... Uh, there was a serial killer movie he did years ago. Um, like Miss, It's like Mr. Nobody or something like that. Ooh, uh, well, I can't, yeah, I've never seen that. I've never um, seen that. Let's, because, let's see if, you if the good people him, at IMDb yeah. can lend us a hand on this. If one. you look at him, a, a very large, imposing figure. We've said that before. It's what adds to his slapstick comedy. Um, but, you know, it's the fact that he's so tall. Uh, there's there's an element of that. And his deliveries, you know, he's, he's very quick, um, very dry sense of humor, which I think works very well for him. But it's very easy to just move that over a notch and it becomes incredibly imposing a la something like Drive Across Concrete or even more notably um, Brawl and Cell 99. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's there. And I think it worked really well for him in there that you get him as the slasher killer in which when he is occupying that body, he is pretty, like, there are a couple of scenes where he's very, very fucking evil. But then on the flip side of that, you get the the over-the-top campy comedy of his body being occupied by that of a, a teenage girl and all that was hilarious so um more Vince Vaughn I think yeah I, I you know I, I I hope this is not spoilers for anyone but I think that uh the scene with him in the back seat with the potential boyfriend <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is really funny but it's also a movie that could have played a lot a lot more slapstick and a lot yep. more like gay panic and yep. instead it's it it actually becomes this very sweet scene mm -hmm. where the guy is just like i don't care what body you're in you know like yep. you're you're still the girl that i'm into and uh and i thought that scene could have played like really hammy mm -hmm. and ended up being very sweet yeah, um, yeah, I'm with you on that, a hundred percent. So, like I say, didn't yeah. see anything necessarily bad, um, but I thought that was worth bringing up just because I know you'd mentioned it previously, and when you mentioned it previously, memory serves because I don't listen back to these both, so I can't tell. Yeah, uh, you should listen to the show sometime. You can even watch it now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, yeah, you you'd said something about you know you'd be interested to hear my thoughts. Yeah. So there there we go. Turns so out I was wrong. 
Yeah, Tom Sawyer. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> you son of a bitch. It was your bad because you said you were really, oh, really excited shit. and energetic, enthused. Yeah. One may say. Let's yeah, let's talk about that. Uh, speaking of the the Legion Patreon folks, um, so uh, you may or may not know Duncan because uh, I know you don't listen to the show. Um, that I enjoy a movie called Grizzly quite a bit. <laughs> Grizzly's a great movie, though. Grizzly is a great fucking movie. Um, and they released a sequel. They finished a an unfinished sequel to Grizzly entitled Grizzly 2 Revenge. I have heard of this. Yes. So what I did, Duncan, is I, I watched that movie last night. And it all, I, I, as I was watching it, I was like, all right, I'm going to record this for posterity. I turned it into a commentary, which you can find on the Legion Patreon now. But mm -hmm. um, anyway, <laughs> spoilers, that movie's a piece of shit, Duncan. <laughs> and and let me tell you at least a couple of the ways that's true. Um, <laughs> first of all, first of all. Uh, when they say that George Clooney, Laura Dern, and Charlie Sheen are in it, that is 100% true. They are in it for about two and a half minutes at the very beginning of the movie. They get murdered by this puppet bear, and they're gone. Um, See, you've sold it to me already. Like, you mentioned puppet bear. All and right. I'm kind of like, I want to see that boy. Here's the thing. I will 100% watch this movie again because it is bad. <laughs> it, it is bad in a really special way. Like, this is mwah, chef's kiss crap. You know, um, so that happens at the very beginning. Then we cut to some clear stock footage of a drone flying over a forest. Oh. And, and Duncan, th like, this is going to sound like a joke, but this is 100% true. I've often wondered, can you make an, enti an entire movie out of stock footage? <laughs> And Grizzly 2 is proof that no, you cannot. So the amount oh, the amount of stock footage used in this movie, Duncan, is mind-boggling. I mean, you're talking 10-15% of the movie is stock footage. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole sequence. And, and it was funny because even on the commentary I was doing, even on that, I was like, okay, stock footage of two bears fighting. And here's some <laughs> stock footage of some geese. And here's some stock footage of a bear. Oh, now we're back to the two bears. Now we're back to the geese. Oh, there's that bear climbing a tree again. Like uh, an entire sequence, nothing but stock footage that clearly is on better film stock than the original film itself. Oh, like every no. time, and there's a big concert. Like the whole the whole movie is sort of like uh, they're gonna throw this big concert in the <laughs> woods, and there's this rampaging bear because a hunter blew uh, this bear cup's face off in the first two seconds of the movie. Mm -hmm. And bear, the bear of the titular bear, Grizzly 2, out for revenge, um, is going after just wh whomever it can get its giant paws on. Another big problem with Grizzly 2 The Revenge, not much grizzly in Grizzly 2 The Revenge. Oh, not no. a lot of bear. Because they didn't have a whole lot of bear that they shot in the original footage. So you're basically trying to make every bear attack work in the movie based on the footage you have. Yeah. And so the end of the movie is this like shotgun blast of editing of like, what happened? Who's that? Wait, are those people <laughs> the police? What happened to the bear? He's dead now. Like, <laughs> wait a second. It was Billy, the lighthouse keeper. <laughs> Dude. John Reese Davies is in this fucking movie <laughs> and, and is in it quite a bit as a French Canadian trapper named Broussard, who now Broussard. Had, Broussard, whose wife and kid were killed by a grizzly bear. And so now he lives and talks like a Native American for no other reason that they're like, just like he kind of went native and that's it, I guess. And so like when you first see him, John Reese Davies has one axe slung over his shoulder and another one through his belt. He's double accident. <laughs> He's double accident. He's double accident. And I was like, holy shit, if this movie ends with John Reese Davies fighting a bear with two axes, this is going to be the greatest movie ever. But that's not what happens. <laughs> and like, kind of, but then the bear just throws John Reese Davies on some scaffolding at a certain point. It's mm -hmm. super quick. 
Um, because again, we only have so much footage. And but the, what I was gonna say though is that while they're doing this big concert, you know, like that's where the bear attack is happening at the end of the movie. And while they're doing this big concert, they have to cut because we're patting this movie out. Like we got to get this thing to <laughs> seventy four minutes. <laughs> So in addition to all the stock footage you saw earlier, now we're just cutting in footage of this concert that is happening. It looks like Eurovision or something is happening <laughs> because they're all foreign bands. It's like, I, I think I refer to them as Noct Ranger and like Ariel Volkswagen. <laughs> it's like... It is madness, Duncan. It's so fucking funny. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, it's like, it's terrible. It's, it's a movie in quotes, uh, mm -hmm. but it's like, it's garbage. It is a hundred percent garbage, but it is so fucking funny, Duncan. Um, oh man. So I'm, yeah, like, I'm I can't gonna end up seeing it. I'm going to end up seeing it. You know, what I'm... I can't recommend it because there are long stretches of the movie that are so fucking boring, but then they cut to a scene where a bunch of hunters are in the woods drunk literally playing grab ass like literally chase each other grabbing each other's asses you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like that kind of thing and i was like what is happening one of those hunters is charles cyphers from like assault on precinct 13 and halloween and you know everybody's entitled to one good bear you know that guy <laughs> it's halloween um <laughs> it's it's insanity duncan I, I oh, like, again I can't recommend it but you should absolutely see it because it is it, it just it like totally answers the question of like what do you do with a half made movie that you mm -hmm. just happen to have the rights to and the answer is you get a bunch of Hungarians together and like when you watch the end credits the uh like they think multiple times like Adobe stock iStock Shutterstock Getty <laughs> Images like it is it, it, like I had to watch it because I was like, you know that they've got to credit this. They use so mm -hmm. much stock footage that they've got to be like, look, y'all, if it weren't for, honestly, if it weren't for like a uh, Shutterstock, this movie never would have happened. <laughs> you know? stuff like this is the thing, like the technology we carry on, like our, our mobile phones can record in 4K now. Like there is absolutely no reason to use stock. I understand to an extent bears, right? Sure, <laughs> like, but sure. like wildlife. Yeah, no, it's all just wildlife stock footage of, like, deer running around and shit like that. But also, it, whether you do it or the stock footage company does it, still don't matter. It ain't going to look nothing like the yeah, movie. Yeah, it's never going to look the same. Right. Never going to look the same. Because the yeah. original movie was shot in, like, 35 millimeter film. Mm -hmm. And so it is very clear when you are watching the original movie. And then when you cut to stock footage of, you know, yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> instead of yes, that's what I was going for. It didn't quite make it. But um, but when you see that, uh, and and you're just like, man, the in in long stretches, like whole one of them, Duncan, is an entire music video that clearly is happening in a different place other than the stage of this concert. But <laughs> but they clearly bought this music video, and we're like, oh, we can just cut between like shots of this video, which looks like it was done in someone's backyard to the crowd kind of going nuts but not really that enthusiastic like it's it's it is really something Duncan that movie is really <laughs> something um <laughs> so give, give me your bad and I dare you to top that well no that's like that's what I'm saying I've not seen a bad so like like freaky was a conversation to to kind of rein things out I've not actually seen anything that I dislike but I'll tell you what I really liked, and having seen your list of top 10 horror movies, I know for a fact you liked it as well, because uh, it featured in your top 10, I believe, either that was one of your honorable If nations. you don't think I will totally gainsay my opinion, I, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's a small Swedish effort called Coco di Coco Da. Oh, um, yeah, that is a really weird fucking movie, but it's cool. It's a fucking great movie, is what it is. It's like they made it for me. And I, I thought linking into the whole kind of freaky conversation about someone who has clearly taken elements of a kind of popular film 
uh, mechanism, you know, a storytelling mechanism, and segued it into a horror movie. I, I, I heard uh, Mark Kermode, the great British movie critic, um, and his introduction to the video on BFI, because that's if you're in the UK, you can get it on the BFI player and you get seven days free. Um, with that player on Amazon Prime. So it's the British Film Institute for those that don't know. Um, and Mark Kermode does an, in, uh, an introduction for it. Uh, I, I would buy it. I, I, own it. I bought it um, after seeing it earlier on in the year, but this is kind of my revisit and I doubled down on how great I think it is. But he said it was like a, a cross between Groundhog Day and Funny Games. And I think that's spot on. <laughs> so, yeah. That's what fucking is. yeah. That, that yeah. Yeah. Pretty pretty much. Um, it's an incredible movie. I like. I genuinely think it's 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 kind of phenomenal in that he does it and it double- without warning it goes from being a very it goes from being a very serious movie to being an incredibly disturbing movie, but all still through the guise of like a, like a, through the lens almost of this Grimm's fairy tale kind of dark folk, almost folk tale sort of vibe through the characters that appear. But essentially what you have is a a married couple um, and a child, um, and the uh, you know the they go to like it starts off they're at a restaurant yeah and... with, with a really shitty floor show yeah it's a terrible <laughs> floor show um uh, <laughs> but for all we know that might be the number one floor show in denmark so right, let's not right, piss like, too hard. <laughs> between between this and breaking surface i'm like man scandinavians <laughs> are fucking weirdos they, they they have they have their own vibe. Yeah, uh, for sure. They yeah. have their own vibe. Uh, so yeah, the the, the mum eats shellfish. It causes an allergic reaction. She's rushed to the hospital. As she's recovering, the daughter sadly passes away. Um, and we jump forward with them, and their marriage is kind of on the rocks. And they are trying to get away to try and reconnect by staying remote in the country uh, for a camping trip. But as they arrive for their camping trip, the three central characters um, from the side of their daughter's favourite toy, her music box, um, appear each night in a weird kind of surreal time loop where they're repeating the same actions over and over again. Um, But these people come with the the sole purpose of torturing and murdering them. Um, and yeah, I, I'm not going to go too much in it. There are some scenes that are are really fucking upsetting, like really, really, really upsetting. And it's because the characters themselves that are perpetrating this. Imagine, if you will, um, the Firefly family from Rob Zombie's, you know, uh, Devil's Rejects became like fairy tale characters, like fairy tale villains. And that's kind of what you've got here. Um, and it's played like the 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 cruelty almost almost doubles up every time this loop resets. Um, so there's a, there's almost there's like a bit of the there's a bit of the endless in there as well. The Benson and Moorhead movie in terms of this kind of time bubble that they're stuck in, and whenever they try, the husband remembers events from the day before. Uh, so he try it well from the loop before, and whatever he tries to do. And a way to affect the change actually only makes things worse. Um, it's it's fucking great. I, I really like one of the more unique watches of 2020 for me uh, in terms of movies. I think, yeah. and it also intersplices some really cool kind of almost kind of shadow puppet and almost paperwork puppet. Yeah, the, sequences which are beautiful but fucking haunting at the same time yeah i 100 percent. like you could just do like a super cut of that stuff mm. of of all that kind of like uh it reminded me a little bit of impedagor you know yes. in terms of mm-hmm. using that kind of shadow puppetry mm-hmm. um but you could kind of assemble all of those and sort of get the story of this family and their emotional arc you know more importantly it's it's sort of like the whole movie is about how how to live with loss and how do you learn yeah. how do you learn to take something that just ravages you emotionally 
and try to build some kind of life afterwards. And... It would weirdly, weirdly double uh, if you want a full night of misery, shoving some Lars von Trier with Antichrist. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> get yeah. yourself a big old bowl of popcorn that you'll not want to eat. Um, it's and, uh... but like like black popcorn if you can find it. You know, <laughs> this is like goth like we... popcorn. <laughs> Goth, goth, goth corn. corn. Yeah, goth corn. <laughs> That's right. Go to leadershippodcast.com forward slash store. I don't know. We don't have that, it's, but it's we should. A, it's the sort of thing that you play those movies back to back in a very dark room with a bottle of whiskey and a bucket of ice, and you just slowly drink, and you have the facial reactions of a hardened police. I mean, the facial reactions of Woody Harrelson in the first season of True Detective, when he's made watch the movie of what happens to the kid. Right, or like, like, no! And it's such nice class. That's what you want. That's what that movie will do to you. Um, uh, what is the... Oh. oh, God. What is that George C. Scott movie where he's forced to watch the, the porn that his, or the snuff film his daughter's in? I can't think I, of the name of the movie, but when he's just like, oh, God. Yeah. God, uh, God, God. It's, it's, also, it's also like a Nicolas Cage and 8mm. And 8mm, yeah. It's, yeah, it's that That's vibe. the reaction. You double build those bottle of whiskey at the side bucket of ice like fancy tongs so you can lift the individual ice cubes to your glass and you just keep topping that motherfucker up and loads society um it's, it's, it's in all seriousness it's a great movie i think it, it kind of will it's the epitome of the polarizing movie though um like in the genre yeah. it is it's leaning towards art house and it's also leaning towards a slightly oblique way of telling like a story through loss so they're, they're using those mechanisms in a, a, a an interesting way but i mean if you like meat and potatoes nuts and bolts horror movies i'm gonna probably say you're not gonna enjoy this if like if funny games to you was a movie that lost you when they did the rewind section in the middle of it um then right, imagine not... if that's act two of a movie yeah like, <laughs> <You know? laughs> that's literally it so yeah that, that's you know it's definitely 100 not for you but I, I appreciate it quite a bit so that's my, that was my good like i see it was a rewatch and i don't know why it didn't connect maybe as much with me i think it was during i watched it as like an additional movie and during my 31 of october and i think it was just because i was watching so much stuff it kind of glossed over me but I, I put a pre-order in for it at the time. Um, so when it did arrive, it's no line on my shelf for ages. And then obviously trying to round off that end of year list. I was like, I'm going to go back and check this one out and just see, you know, if it, it climbs up a bit, climbed up quite a bit for me on the second watch. So, yeah, at, at some point I should watch that again, but you know, probably won't. Um, <laughs> but Grizzly 2 on the other Grizzly hand. Grizzly 2, look, man. Yeah, I, I, how that is, they might as well have just called it, hey, Bo, comma, Grizzly 2 Revenge. Yep. You know, that's all like, I need to do. Yeah, that movie was made for me. It is it is the kind of <laughs> shitty I enjoy, and it's about bears. We'd like to thank Shutterstock. We'd like to thank Adobe Image. We'd like to thank Bo Ransdell, who we know watched this. <laughs> yeah, for sure watched it. It also has been a vocal supporter of Grizzly over the years. <laughs> thank you for keeping the fur alive. <laughs> hey, what was your kid then? Well, oh, well, cause you've been you've been you've been binge watching a lot of stuff, I, so I, it, yeah. it can float your boat. Uh, yeah, lots of stuff. Uh, it's it, it really has been kind of great to go back and watch a lot of really good movies. Like, uh, aside from Grizzly 2, I'm kind of in the same boat where I didn't really watch a bad movie for like a month, which is yeah. crazy. Uh, given the number of movies I watch, usually there's a real stinker uh, slipped <laughs> in there. Um, you have to battle for supremacy in your mentions on these shows. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Like, I saw one recently called, uh, what was it called? Uh, like, Ouija, not Ouija Geist. It was like... <laughs> Please tell me there's a movie called Ouija Geist. There is a movie called Ouija Geist. Oh my good god almighty. Uh, but there was a new Ouija movie I saw hit hit uh, the streaming services, and I was like, god damn it, I'll probably watch that. Yeah, I, you're I, a mark for it. I, I, there is something about any movie, I, I, it's just a uh, like a funny gag now. Of just yeah. like, hey, if you throw Ouija in the title, I'll probably watch it just to see what the fuck it is. Uh, yeah. I don't have any particular <laughs> interest in Ouija boards or Ouija technology. Technology. You know what I mean. And <laughs> planchette te technology. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah. 
I uh, I'm I'm very excited uh, uh, to watch whatever that Ouija film is. But anyway, so I've been, I've been watching a lot of really good stuff. And one of the really good stuffs uh, that I've seen, for, first of all, special shout out to Spontaneous. Again, everyone should watch the movie Spontaneous. It is excellent. Yeah, that, that, was, that, that was, was one of the movies I watched last night. So, it's yeah. Fucking excellent. good. Um, yep. That, and I'll tell you, like we, we won't spend too long on Spontaneous because there's a movie I really want to talk about that also is kind of about the woods. Um, but uh, the thing I like so much about Spontaneous is, uh, and I said this in, in the top 10 review, is that movie is completely about what it's like to be a teenager living at the time of, of mass school shootings without yeah. ever once using the word school shootings yeah yeah and I, I think it's, it's it's a movie that we as there's a there's a real aggressive way of putting over the message subtly yeah makes sense. i and i really appreciate it. it reminded me in a lot of respects the that movie from a couple of years ago assassination nation yes 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 and it was like that way where it like i like i adore that movie because i think it's at times you need to be loud to get a point across. Um, and I think spontaneous is very loud, but d deals with it in a smarter way than like assassination nation. It's, it, it's imagine, you know, the, the, there's, there's a level of like, kind of just the, the levels that Tarantino goes when he goes like, right, I'm going to shoot an action sequence and it's going to get really gory. <laughs> like, well, that's, that's, a, that's, you know, that's assassination nation in a whole movie. Um, but what spontaneous does is like, it is not, it is not shy in its messaging at all, but it very cleverly knows that if it starts to, is that way where it's the lawyer speech in that movie. Uh, which I can never remember. Um, where well, it's Matthew McConaughey. It's oh, uh, a, a time to kill. Yeah, it's a time to kill. It's the, that's now, that. Now that imagine that little girl <laughs> was blowing up. Yeah, that, you know what I mean. Is that that's the that's the clever thing about that one is. But at the beginning, it's not. I and mean, even though they do make mention, um, like when she survives the the kind of first initial bout of what's happening our parents pick her up and you know they say that they well, as soon as they heard the kid exploded in the school the first thought was you know cheer um and but the, the movie doesn't really need to double down on that afterwards uh but it does like for those that aren't paying attention you'd be halfway in at that movie without realizing what the messaging is about and then when it lands you're like oh right for me it was like it was obvious like very early on but i just enjoyed how the didn't tiptoe around the issue they just chose not to mention it that way but mm. still can be the same message it's very well it's very well acted it's very well shot i love the gore the gore is fucking br like the scenes of just like people standing there and then just being sprayed in red as as you know as you know i'm a horror fan that sort of stuff is the stuff i live for but the the attitude and the swagger and the monologue at the end especially um great, yeah. I, yeah i'd like i was like that just have that that's the, that's the monologue they just play that loud um right now on. <laughs> yeah like it's got you know i know you don't care about these things duncan but it's got a really wonderful love story at the center of it uh <laughs> no i'm only joking I'm only, yeah. I, I didn't like that <laughs> but yeah like it's the main character uh katherine langford is the actress's name who plays mara and she's fucking amazing in it and... but she's the chick from 13 reasons why isn't she yeah her uh Wait, she's brilliant in that as well so, so uh, she this is the first time i ever saw her I, I didn't ever i never saw 13 reasons why uh and she's also a lead in some merlin show called cursed i think something like that Ooh, right um but she's amazing like she is a, a straight up star as far as i'm concerned anyway we're not talking about spontaneous duncan even though we <laughs> talked about spontaneous uh spontaneous is a great movie and everybody should watch it it's wonderful um, yes it, it's one of the movies that i'm like i don't care who you are i can recommend this movie unreservedly to you because even mm -hmm. if you don't like horror movies it's so funny and and smart and sweet and kind of you know pessimistically optimistic at the end of the movie yep. you know it's it's really wonderful but the movie i want to talk to you about is a movie called hunter hunter which is the second movie that i watched last night in Fuck anticipation Duncan. in anticipation <clears throat> like I, you, you you mentioned them and i'm like that you know he may mention them on the show so yeah. i will do my homework yeah 
Uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this. I think Hunter Hunter, I, I again, I said this uh, when I was doing my top 10 list. I don't think it resolves all its themes as well as a spontaneous, mm -hmm. but there is not a second of that movie that I'm not totally compelled by it. Yeah. And that ending, y'all, it gets to an <laughs> ending that is just like, hey, come here real quick. Boom. It just punches you right in the puss, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and and you're like, God damn, Hunter Hunter. I didn't like I knew we were going places in this movie. Yeah. I didn't know that's where we were going, but it it's not just pure shock like it is earned. It feels mm -hmm. like th that's kind of what the movie was building to. I just didn't recognize that. Um the moment where Devin Sawa comes across that like body farm out in the woods yeah. where he's just like, I'm about to set some motherfucking traps, y'all. And like <laughs> that's his solution of like, I'm not involving the outside world because the mm -hmm. outside world is I I want nothing to do with, and that's ultimately the downfall of this family. Yeah. Is is this sense of like we're gonna let the rest of the world go by and not participate in it? I mm -hmm. think as I'm talking to you, I'm resolving some of the themes of the movie that I promised. <laughs> with. But I think that uh, uh, the the all the performances in it are really great from actors that are kind of recognizable but don't like pop up in everything. Mm -hmm. Um, and like Devin Sawa and Nick Stahl and you know people I remember from the nineties you yeah. know, popping up in these movies. So it's like, oh yeah, you can act. You kind of got caught up in the, you know, hey, you're going to be the next pretty boy star or whatever. But both of these actors are totally good. Nick Stahl, I think, is super creepy in this. He's he's excellently cast. And Devin Sawa was a weird one just in general in that, like, his, re his return to the genre was via the, you know, the Limp Biscuit frontman directed, what was it, Fanatic uh, the, the, or what was I thought it was it just the fan or was it the fanatic i thought it was i the don't fan. have a clue I mean, that one there pretty he's, he's great in that he's great yeah. in that movie as well and he's about to be in he's about to be in the the new danzig movie the horror vampire western movie with uh now, what, what? why they are giving that guy another movie is beyond me but whatever <laughs> fine julian sands is going to play a a, a a vampire in a cowboy hat bow and the that has me in <laughs> I, as long as he blows some sort of drug leaking mutant throughout the film, that's what I want to see. Um, yeah, but yeah, like I thought the casting was great. Just like to to, to link in, I'll, I'll, I'll let you continue on. I thought it was great. Um, there's that, that's a movie that has a very deliberate, ominous feel right from the start, um, and and continues right the way to the very end. I think the ending is great to a point and maybe not as much there's like a one shot that doesn't make any sense to me right at the very end and we can speak offline about it so we're not spoiling anything where i'm like uh, yeah i know why you did it but uh, but everything up to that was fucking great i think you're talking about like i enjoy movies where there is a degree of survivalism that has to come out of it and like those movies set in nature are always great like as a grounding for for that because everything's an equalizer to an extent in fact if anything the 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 risk that you, especially from her perspective because her as our final girl or this family and um, they live off the land so basically they're against someone who also lives off the land so to speak so that that i think makes a really interesting dynamic um and i think you are right i think that in action of of the character and actually saying, right, well, I've, I've found something that's clearly a fucking crime scene uh, and we need to get some authorities up in this bitch. Um, the fact that that doesn't happen, like you said, it's, it's the same sort of idea of like a, a Josh Brolin um, keeping the suitcase in No Country for Old Men. Yeah, totally, like, yeah. That one action sets out, you know, the entire rest of the movie. And I think that works really, really, really well in this. I think there are a couple of scenes that like genuinely got under my skin and moments that I felt like that way where I could feel my the room was that quiet with me watching it last night, pitch black, just that movie on, that I could feel my heartbeat. I could actually hear it in my chest because everything was so fucking eerily quiet. Um and it takes a lot to to kind of keep all that together. And I think it's a surprisingly strong movie for sure. It's one that shot me. Like I genuinely thought, because I remember reading the premise about it and going, no, 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 right, whatever. Um, and then I saw how it folded in. It, to me, it always, after seeing the movie, I was like, yeah, you, that always made sense. I don't know why I kind of struggled to get on board with the idea of it when I heard about it like a month ago. 
Um, I, I can see why it's making so many end of year lists for sure. Uh, it will be a mine. I will not give the placement, but yeah, I thought it was excellent. Yeah, I'm I'm glad you at least enjoyed it. I think. Uh, yeah, 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 it's uh, really good. The, like any movie where somebody describes like hey, I need you to smell this shit. Now tell me what animal it came from. Yeah. You know, that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah. well, I'll never do that because that sounds <laughs> gross. But I love it when other people do in a movie when they're just like, yeah, that's that's definitely raccoon scat. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Let, let me give it a little more nibble. Yep, nope, nope. I was wrong. That's not raccoon. That's hedgehog. Um, <laughs> I, I also like the fact that there's that... Uh, the kind of local ranger who mm. keeps getting called up uh, because the assholes just won't put locks on their garbage can lids. Yeah. And, uh, the moment where he's like, I had to fucking shoot this bear with a shotgun because you didn't put locks on your trash. And when the guy's like, what do you mean? I, uh, what is this fine for 500 bucks? He's like, hey, <laughs> look, when uh, human beings encounter wild animals, everybody loses, man. Bear lost yeah. his life. You lost five hundred bucks. Go fuck mm -hmm. yourself. Um, anyway, I just like every little scene of that movie, like all the little side tangents and stuff. Every direction, every little alley the movie wants to go down. I'm glad mm -hmm. it does. Yeah, you know, like everything feels interesting and kind of lived in, and like the there's the lady back at the uh, the station who's constantly giving the ranger shit about everything about his food stinking <laughs> about not taking the satellite phone about everything <laughs> and uh i yeah i just i think all of that stuff totally works for me and uh yeah a hunter hunter is it, it was not my favorite of the year because relic happened um, <laughs> it's a really good movie man relic relic is a movie that bothers me just thinking about it yeah you know <laughs> it's just like oh yeah dementia sucks and, yeah. and it could happen to me um, like a, a, a friend of mine has, uh, his father is going through it right now mm -hmm. and, and it's the same thing like, uh, where he is like, oh yeah, it's in my genes. Like it, the chances are, the odds are I yeah. will, I will have dementia at the end of my life. Mm -hmm. And, and that is what relic captures so beautifully. And it's so, it's so hard to do is to capture such a weird esoteric fear like that, yeah. but it fucking nails it. Mm-hmm. It's such a like and, and first time director as well a young yeah. first time director like our first swing at it uh, I, I mean i hate people that are talented but <laughs> yeah like N natalie erica james i think her name is something yeah. like that i'm in i'm in the ballpark uh and i'm not looking at it that's, that's how fucking smart i am duncan <laughs> <laughs> so modest yeah <laughs> you know look in equal measure modesty <laughs> modesty kindness and smarts and judgment Modesty, kindness, <laughs> smarts, and judgment are the keystones of my life. Um, so <laughs> here's what we're going to do, Duncan. <laughs> the weirdest Captain Planet power rings <laughs> come together. I want the judgment ring. <laughs> that's really what I'm best at. I'm like, oh, no, that seems terrible. That's... <laughs> Honestly, like, my superpower is just to be able to look at something and very quickly dismiss it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like it. Yeah. It, it, no matter what it is, like, oh, Josh Hawley says he's going to make his own app for Facebook. Don't care. <laughs> Let it go. It is gone from my head. Uh, but by the way, fuck Josh Hawley. That dude needs to be driven from the Senate. Um, just <laughs> give it time. Give just it time. an FYI. <laughs> We'll see, but like he and Ted Cruz should be fucking ashamed of themselves. Um, yeah, yeah, I think um, we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see how that plays out. I think uh, I think they think they're going to end up in a place that they're not. I think the I think I think you're right. I think I think the temperature yeah. has changed. I think the worm, as they say, has turned. And, yes, and I think being political opportunists is not going to serve them well no 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 uh so because you can basically you have a highlight reel that you can run whenever you want now right yeah of like hey here is them like literally right before the riots happen yep encouraging this kind of behavior right yep. it's it's the whole reason trump issued that crazy speech of his where he's like i totally accept the results of the election <laughs> like uh mike murphy who's a, a very funny republican strategist who's been kind of a never trumper for a long time um 
but he he had a really good line about the speech that Trump gave, which was this speech brought to you by the Twenty Fifth Amendment. Uh, okay, you know, it's, there's, there, there there are there are a team of there are a team of people there who have been paid to make sure he doesn't <laughs> he doesn't get kicked out or or uh, or brought up on charges uh, of you know inciting a riot there who have wrote that speech for him. Yeah, <laughs> like, who were like and handed it and said no fucking ad libs. You will read every single word. Or you right. will see it. You will see a jail cell. Uh, so yeah, there's no going off script here. Of like, oh yeah, uh, that's a really, really big amendment. Yeah, like, one of my like, favorites. People say it's the best. Yeah, yeah. all, no, you, no, all no. you have to do is nail this, and then you can do whatever you want on Twitter afterwards. But you need to that we will be able to show this afterwards that you said this word for word. Because um, he does, he does feel, he <laughs> does feel like when he's standing there, like. Uh, that it, it does feel like someone's off camera um like holding a ransom note yeah, it's, the, well it's the old national it's fucking lame. like that national lampoon magazine cover of like buy this magazine or we shoot this dog you know yeah. that old it's that <laughs> except it's just someone right off stage with a gun to his head or probably yep. just like numbers are are like uh writs of complaint and warrants of like yeah this is what comes for you if you don't say this shit yeah. Like, like the twenty fifth will happen if you don't say this right now. Yeah, and, and, and you can see you can see it. There's a, there's a there's a defeatist tone, like all the way. It's yeah. like dripping right through the whole thing. But yeah, like I say, this is like if you thought you could make a quick buck off this, I think you'll find very very quickly that the the court of public opinion probably is not going to allow you to do that. And you've basically given the greatest highlight reel ever now like honestly the as horrible as it is there's a a a, a full list of things now um that people will be able to see that you uh instigated with what you said and then justify it now so you've got um, as if you didn't before but like this administration has legitimate blood on its hands now i mean forget about what's going on at the border because that's Mm -hmm. an atrocity all its own but uh but yeah like you, you rudy giuliani in a speech right after the one he made was like you know this is going to be trial by combat and yeah, it's, it's, it's that word yeah. yeah and you can't say that kind of shit to a bunch of you know hopped up rednecks on red bull and bad information yeah and expect them to calm down like i i certainly hold the people who stormed the 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 capital responsible for their actions 100 percent. Yeah. but I don't know that they ever would have done it if you didn't. I mean, th- of course they wouldn't have done it if you had people just being honest about what happened in this election. And yeah. and and the people who realize, oh, I can make money and further my political career by lying about the fundamental nature of the election. Yep. That's, you know, I'm I'm glad they're paying a price. And and when people are like, well, if there's only 12 days left, you're you're splitting the country, you shouldn't impeach this guy again. I'm like, fuck that. If there if ever there was a reason to impeach somebody a second time, you know. Well, he also set, also sets a weird precedent that you can be a complete dick for the last, I mean, up, you know. Right, you can't up, get away with office this. all the way through it and then right at the very end you can do something. I mean, well, the the whole point of setting these sort of these sort of penalties even is that even in your in, in the last days of of your presidency, um, you're still held accountable for your actions? And I don't understand why you would want to say, "Well, he's only got twelve days left, so right, we'll just we'll just, we'll just ride out this this storm." I mean, I, I, to me, it feels. I, I mean, I'm not I'm not saying you know physically handcuff him and drag him out or or whatever other people are saying. I'm sure there are other people that that feel that way. But at the same time, I think. Like, I'll be interested to see what happens with the pardon thing uh, from his perspective about the self pardon and, and if that yeah. is actually legal. Um, are are because... some lawyers just going to be like, hey, man, it's totally legal and he'll do it. And then as soon as he gets out of office, somebody's going to be like, no, nah, that ain't legal. Well, yeah, the thing, the, thing, the, thing about, the thing about it just in general is once you allow it, I think this is what like, I, I think people, I, I say people, I think this is maybe what certain republicans might not understand democrats definitely don't understand it as well uh, but once you once you do that that is the precedent that you can lean back to do it that should right. lead in law that's what the lawyers you would like for those that don't know about law like see when lawyers like say you know we want to make this case based on you know so and so bit like Bo v duncan uh you know in the court of public opinion uh-huh. you know, as soon as you have that precedent set where a judge can go back and check that and say, well, that was the decision we made. This is how they got there. And it was deemed lawful. 
that's you you've argued your case so as soon as you can self-pardon yourself every fucking president from now on will self-pardon themselves and you can't judge it and you can't see anything about it and that's the danger that's the yeah. this is the this is this is the you know you you allow people to to do what he has done in the last four years and you've legitimized at, to the, so much so that you you negate your future arguments because you sided with it um so yeah i i, I will be it'll be interesting to see what happens um yeah. I, I'm just, I'm just enjoying. Uh, I, I mean, I, 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 I couldn't give a. I, I'm like you. I'm not on Twitter much. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen Donald Trump post anything on Facebook either. I'm just looking forward to not having other people post that stuff for a while, or um, just not complaining about. It. Like, like I, I think just, the level of rhetoric is going to dial down so much just because you don't have a president and administration constantly stirring the shit. It's, yeah, it's They're like just going to go that, about the boring business of government. You know? Anyone, yeah, anyone that, like, it's the, it's the hyperbole of, 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 like, people, like, you know, here comes Biden's socialist agenda. Like, one, I keep saying that Americans don't know what socialism is, yeah. like, at all. You have not a fucking clue because you even your socialist parties are right-wing. <laughs> like, they're on the right of the centre. They're not on the left of the centre. They really aren't. Yeah. Um... And you know, because like I live in a country which is which is you know uh, is ruled by a left of centre party, so I know what, and and I'm one hundred percent for it. I think social uh, socialized um, and democratic socialism is a great thing. I, I think it's a great thing. I think it, it it looks after people that need looked after by those that can afford to do it. Um, I think that's that is an important uh, staple of. And it, it doesn't mean that you're all a shell. I have a fucking 70, 77 inch TV on my wall there uh, and a PlayStation 5 down there. So it's not as if I'm not a consumer that goes out and buys shit. Um, I still buy shit, but I believe that if I earn a certain amount, then that money gets kicked back in and no one looks after people that can't look after themselves. But it also looks after me when I can't look after myself. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? That's That's the whole point. And like anyone that thinks like this is the same thing, you know, like all these, oh, he's going to get rid of the police. Kamala, Kamala Harris, you know, him, very both pro, like they've got the, the guy they've got for attorney general, very much pro law and order. Yeah. And it's not it, like, it's, 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 su it's such a silly, did, if people just spent like 10 minutes doing a bit of reading and a bit of research and not living by the way of memes, um, which I know they're easy they're a picture, <laughs> everyone loves a picture and there's five words on it and that's easy to read, um, see if you didn't do that or just don't take your news from Facebook, you know what I mean like that's yeah. the big thing, like spend a bit of time, uh, authenticate wh what you're reading from, see if you do that, I think your life is going to be a lot better because the world isn't as like you, the world is not as bad as you think it is and I, I know our, our buddy the Ram Man had said that he got weirdly unsettled by our, our uh, money plane M money fucking money plane um you want to bet on whether or not you can storm the capital and get away with it money plane, money plane. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking bad uh but like like i think he said he was unsettled that i come across as no i think it was maybe it was a muppet's christmas car I can't, I can't remember i was eternally optimistic and he said he was unsettled by it because i genuinely feel that the world isn't as bad as we we are fed at because guess what happens? See if you're happy and content. It doesn't motivate you to do anything. Other See than you clap your hands on occasion. Yeah. Like, because it really, sometimes really you're happy and you know it. Yeah. <laughs> but See see if, like, like fear's a great motivator. Um, so to keep everyone just on that level of fear constantly um, means that you'll get out and, you know, do silly things like storm a capital when, you know, didn't have to yeah. <laughs> like, it has changed nothing except the people that have done it will all spend lengthy jail sentences and uh, because why <laughs> like what did it right. like, like, I, like but, <laughs> he told me to do it uh well believe it or not it's not a great defense <laughs> it's not, well, yeah. oh, well trump well that's fine you're off that doesn't that doesn't that doesn't work They're unrelated and i know i know we, we're gonna take a break here in a second is what, what's gonna happen and then we're gonna come back and talk about slasher uh yes but how great is that astro's playroom thing as far as showing off how cool that controller is 
have you now played it yeah and it's fucking amazing it's isn't it? really cool uh, it is really good. I, I've, I've been playing that, and the Spider-Man remastered are the the things I've been playing on the PS5. And nice uh, that that Asher's Playroom is it's a fun little platformer anyway. Yeah. But but the stuff that they really show off, one of the coolest things I think is one of the first things um, is when you see a bunch of them little robot fellas jump into your controller and you yeah. move it around and you can yeah. feel them tumble from one it's, into it's- the other fucking amazing <laughs> cool. that and, the, and like even the uh like the air coming out of the controller mm-hmm. during some of those windy levels and stuff like that yeah. it's like like when you when you've got the when you've got the guy that's in charge of xbox saying you know they really got that controller right <laughs> yeah you know you've done something when, when the comp when the league competition is saying I mean, even we have to sit here and say because the PlayStation used to get a lot of flack for its controller, always has. Um, and yeah, well, that PlayStation Two and Three controller was kind of garbage, but go on. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. Like, as like, when you have when you have someone going, you know what? Fair play to them. Um, and I, I, I totally agree. I think it's a as a great demo of that. Um, and yeah, it makes you want to play more. I think uh, that's uh, the, yes. the thing for me. I, I want to play. I want to play more games that that start to incorporate more of that. Mm-hmm. I'm very much looking forward to that kind of moving forward when the the newer games come out. Because at the moment, going it's like game chat before the break. Uh, my time is still vastly dominated by Cyberpunk uh, 2077, which is right, I understand if I had it on PlayStation 4, I'd probably have been pissed. I saw some of the render and it looked fucking awful. But on PlayStation 5, that game is shit fucking hot. I mean, that is a... It's only 20, 20 hours gameplay. I'm 30 hours into it, and I, I think I'm 10% through the main mission. Well, that's, like, that's because you do all the weird sex stuff in the games. Uh, I do so much weird sex stuff in the game. You call it weird sex stuff. I call it sex. <laughs> all right. On that note, let's take a, a, a quick five here to do some, some fun sex stuff. Mm. And uh, <laughs> Five minutes is maybe too long, actually. I could maybe do it twice. Uh, so... <laughs> So, we'll be right back with talk of Slasher Season 1, Episode 1, which uh, is why we're here, and it's, it's going to be nonsense. It uh, will be. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, we'll be, we'll be back in, in, in two minutes. We'll be back in two and two. All right. Two. Be, be right back. <laughs> Bye. Too young, too scared. I wasn't ready. I was less longing inside my body. All right, we are back uh, from our our break. Yes, and we it, we are here, Duncan, to go about the people's business. <laughs> by, people, <laughs> by people's business, of course, I mean uh, to talk about the originally Chiller was the the network that this appeared on. Right, so this is why you were referring to incorrectly for a while is chiller is this larger um what was chiller right for, for the, someone that isn't american obviously uh-huh. uh or doesn't have access to all the great things that america gives their viewers mm-hmm. which is choice um right. what, what what per se was a chiller chiller was an attempt at doing another horror channel i don't know if it still exists anymore mm. i want to say eli roth had some money in this thing Oh, uh, right. But they produced a couple of original movies, none of which were very good. <laughs> and then they did an original series. And I, this is all off the top of my head, so I could be making some or all of this up. Uh, so, you know, if you really cared, you'd, you'd do some research. Or if I cared, I would do some research. But, I've all forgotten that this conversation has happened as soon as we stop. <laughs> I remember learning to ride a bike and right now. Um... <laughs> so so, um but yeah so uh it was called slasher on the chiller network yes are you drinking 
I'm having a coffee. Oh, right. You, you did say it was coffee. I thought, did you, did you <laughs> in, in the interest Don't of- judge me. It's half past three here. If I want to have a drink, I can have a drink. And in the <laughs> interest, in the interest of keeping on brand, did yes. you Irish it up a little bit? I didn't know. I, 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 I have a, I, I don't want to, well, you can open the, the, the alcoholic door. Hello. Um, so, <laughs> Uh, it's more of a hey <laughs> more of a fall through it yeah uh, stumble oh, trying to find it's like an inability to unlock the door because you can't find your keys um <laughs> it's just it's, a knock at the door hey susan wait the, up. And, and it's the wrong door as well <laughs> you know, it's yeah. neighbor's door um, susan lives next door you drunk motherfucker there's a great there's a great um there's a great <laughs> bit of stand up from Scottish comedian uh, Frankie Boyle who I, I love dearly because he's bleak, very 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 dark and he talks about one of the most surreal moments he had was travelling through uh, a, a small Scottish town called Bathgate and uh, seeing someone huddled over against the door taking a piss, clearly drunk and then he's finished taking his keys out and unlocking the door <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Welcome to Scotland. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so, um, no, uh, I, I drank a lot of alcohol uh, in my two and a half weeks off work uh, to the tune of, I was over 50 cans of beer and a couple of bottles of hard alcohol. So wow. I'm trying to, yeah, yeah. When I go for it, Bo, I go for it, right? Like, I, like, I commit. I don't drink, I don't drink often, often, if you know what I mean, like drink, drink, you know, have the occasional whiskey here or there, uh -huh. but when I do, when I know I've got time off work, I make up for it, um, so yeah, it's just coffee, <laughs> just coffee, um, and there's nothing spiking it at all, if I start getting slurry, it's because I'm Scottish, uh, and that will happen, um, so, <laughs> uh, so speaking oh, shaming me publicly on a camera, see, you would never have known if the camera hadn't been on, well, you're going to be able to see all my secrets. I'm going to have to hide this hip flask. Yeah, that's the, the gun in my ankle holster. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the, this this came out a few years ago. and 2016, this is the thing that blew my mind, because I remember people talking about it either last year or the year before. So, like, when I say last year, I mean 2019 as opposed to 2020. Um, I remember people talking about about like slasher i think it may, may have been because it just come across to maybe netflix over here and people were checking out that i just assumed it was a recent thing um and 2016 i mean let's be honest now that's five years ago <laughs> so a lifetime now yeah 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 like <laughs> it feels a little longer and uh, so um yeah but the weird thing about it is i could never get a straight answer from anyone as to whether or not it was good until you mentioned that you watched a couple of episodes, like so people would just tell me they'd watch Slasher, and I'd be like, "Okay," <laughs> like, but they weren't raving about it. They weren't condemning it either, which is always that weird. You know, you need someone to give you a nudge sometimes when you've got a hundred things to watch to go and watch something. So, yes, yeah. So that nudge, and I've had a couple of people lie to me and tell me that it was good. <laughs> <laughs> and we will hunt them down yeah. after publicly shaming them at the end yeah you know i've got a list of names at the end of the episode like a list of stock footage from grizzly too <laughs> is you, you you're the steve buscemi and happy gil not happy gilmore uh billy, billy madison, madison yeah and you just got like a just <laughs> crossing marking it on lipstick as you're putting it on <laughs> <laughs> hello fellow children um <laughs> so <laughs> So we open, Duncan, episode one of, of Slasher. It We open on this jack-o'-lantern, right? Like, we're getting a real Halloween vibe out of this thing. Mm -hmm. And it says it's Halloween 1988. And so we kind of go through the streets, and trick-or-treaters are roaming around and stuff. It's a real holiday uh, festival. And inside the house, there's this dude named Brian dressing up like an asshole cowboy. And he's, <laughs> he's got a little neckerchief and stuff. He looks like he's dressed up like Woody from Toy Story. Yes, and but Toy Story doesn't exist in this time frame. Yeah, it would have in 2016. Ah, but you said this was 1988, though. Oh, that's right. I did say that. Thanks yeah. for thanks for fact checking sentences that just came before <laughs> this, Duncan. Um, <laughs> real time fact checking on Duncan and Will come correct. 
Um, that's, that's why there's two of us and not one of us to do this show. It's so one can like one of us is constantly prepped to point out the inaccuracy. The other one says, <laughs> it's, it's take, glee, "Take pleasure in the fact that we get to tell the other person that they're wrong." We, we both have an abacus beside us, and we move the dots along as the show goes along. <laughs> one point to Duncan. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, so so Woody from Not Toy Story, clearly, <laughs> is getting ready for some party, and his wife, Rachel, uh, is like, look, I'm not going to this fucking party. I'm just going to level with you right now. Look how pregnant I am. And she is like balloon ball. Yeah, she's the most know. pregnant woman that has ever existed. Like, she, like to the point where I'm like, that is this pregnancy? Like, how many kids are you giving birth to? Because it looks like there's seven in there fighting just now for supremacy. Looks well, like you have a Highlander tournament in your stomach right now. <laughs> she said she's got a litter, <laughs> and and she's like, I would have gone to this party like I had this Elvira wig all picked out. And he's like, We can do that next year. And she's like, Yeah, but I'm not gonna have pregnant tits next year. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, we're Catholic. You will. I promise you that. <laughs> Catholic twins, baby. Look it up. And <laughs> and he's like, look, I'll stay home with you. And she's like, no, no, no. You go have fun at the party. And then the doorbell rings. And he's like, hey, that must be my pal, Alan, who, mm-hmm. who I'm going to go to this party with along with you, my wife, uh, because yeah. exposition is, is really important in this in this episode and so he answers the door and it's just a dude dressed like a black condom yes this is supposed to be an executioner's outfit which did make me wonder had anyone involved with this show actually done any sort of research on what an executioner actually looks like yeah. um because this mask is far too a lot they spent money creating this condom tipped black mask uh which doesn't need to be done uh we can tend that dreaded sundown this and just have a black sack yeah yeah it could just be kind of zodiac creepy as opposed it would be to... much more creepier than what we have here which is like it's a total rubber mask like it, yeah all it... that's missing is a zip at the front like yeah. it's like a fucking gimp mask yeah this is we'll get to the crazy sex shit but like he's yeah. dressed for it and, and i mean the, the the mask as well it's got it's weirdly not only is it weirdly shaped and that it has this kind of like we said like the the a reservoir, a reservoir. Tip. yeah <laughs> <laughs> one mind this is what happens when you podcast for six years together um like let's, and now we'll move the abacus slot across to twinsies that's uh-huh. one uh-huh. Uh, uh, right and, remove <laughs> one of the the anger abacai or whatever yeah. you pronounce it. <laughs> but the thing about it is as well is it's just like he's wearing a giant black frock right and um this weird like the mask doesn't match it's kind of made of a different material as well and it's kind of weirdly ribbed (laughs) for his pleasure this time once again i was just going like one where's this come from two did you buy it three you know did you make it that throws up questions uh four why you even dress like this and um oh the, the the biggest thing is like why his friend doesn't instantly ridicule him for showing up the door dressed like this because our our main man yeah. here thinks this is his buddy to, to the point where like i am going fucking nowhere where you dress like a giant walking black condom you and, go to this party yourself and just immediately like turns his back on this guy's like come in i know you haven't said a word and you're acting creepy <laughs> and you're also not the same height as the gentleman i was expecting but come on in <laughs> visibly smaller like yeah. visibly smaller uh, you know, here are my car keys. My wife's in the other room if you need to attack her. Um, yeah, she's she's pregnant, by the way, so she can't run far. Yeah, um, <laughs> she's really, yeah, really small steps these days. And <laughs> so he's talking to his pal, Alan, and, and so this, you know, condom is following him inside. And then the doorbell rings again. And, mm-hmm. the, and then Brian, our cowboy dude, hands this giant black rubber some candy to hand out. And he's yep. like, the, the, the executioner just doesn't do anything just stands there like a creep and he's like yep. fine don't help me with anything you dick and yeah so- it's my house you know and you're my friend and you're doing fuck all right now except be weird yeah and so th- he goes uh, brian goes to the door and uh it's alan who is like dressed in the costume that brian was expecting and he's showing off some polaroid of his stupid kid and he's yeah. like Hey, look at look at what's going on. Hey, uh, who's this asshole? 
uh, the the big black condom here. And then Brian, in an act of pure stupidity, just turns his back yet again on this stranger in his home. Stranger in his home with his very pregnant wife. This yeah. is like literally the worst husband ever. Right, and he kind of gets close to Adam. He's like, hey, we should really do something about this. I think this guy might be up to something. And then, and then as soon as he starts to tell this guy, like, hey, this guy behind me that I can't see anymore might be up to sh shenanigans. <laughs> Through I, don't his... think he, I don't think he is who he says he is, but I don't know who he is because I didn't ask. He won't say anything. I thought it was you because I make a lot of bad assumptions. <laughs> and, and then a machete just comes through Brian's chest, yep. which he seems surprised by, but nobody in the audience should be because you turn no. your back on a giant black condom in your home. Yeah, and that's what they'll do. They straight first ball. <laughs> yeah. Reservoir tip or no. Uh, this guy's out out for blood, not yep. not semen the way most condoms no. are. No, he's he's he's, 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 he's interested in a whole different bodily fluid. Yeah, but so this machete goes in and then carves right down. I mean, like right down through his lung. So we've mm. come in just about where his heart is and right down through his lung. And then right down through uh, his kidneys and possibly his intestine. And then comes out, just seeing you're dead at this point, right? Right. Yeah. This is instant death. This is, and not only that, it's, it's, it looks like it may have hit through the spine as well. So you're also paralyzed. Um, hit but no, on like, a stick. He's, um, he, the guy falls down and then he st starts doing the, you know, I'm not dead. I'm just really badly burned. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he's, like, he's still alive. <laughs> I feel <laughs> happy. I feel happy. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just a scratch. Um, and uh, so like, I mean, we get this and then for no reason at all, like for no reason at all, it just lets the clearly not very great best friend who stands by the way this death is not instantaneous this death takes like a full 30 seconds for this machete to go in and then down through all these organs while his useless fucking friend uh, stands going oh, oh. what are you doing to my friend <laughs> this is my friend this is his house what's Wait. that costume where did you buy it from uh, <laughs> Why do you look like a giant condom? Executioner, you say? I didn't get that when I first looked at it. No, uh, I didn't, I didn't. But now you mentioned it, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, you know, I get it. I, you have to look at it the right way. Uh, but like, it takes ages, and he stands just, oh, like that, and all this noise doesn't, uh, you know, arouse the suspicion of any of the neighbors. This is a small community, by the way. Uh, all the houses very close together. Or his pregnant wife, right? Because this happens for a while, and then he just fucks off. And the executioner yeah. just lets him go. Well, he slices his face because yeah, that's oh, going to wow, come into bad. play. Yeah, right. It's not bad. It's just like a little <laughs> hink. And then <laughs> then Alan fucks off because why would you stick around? Like, uh, this is my move. It's like, I'm calling the police. You guys are being murdered, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> so I need to get out of here. Um, this isn't even my home. I mean, I have no duty here. Right, right. Like, I can go to the the Halloween party by myself. Like, nobody was... I, I didn't have a plus one. Yeah. Uh, anything you've saved me, the makeup that I would have taken to put this scar on my face. Now I do look like a battling king. Yeah. Now I kind of look like a pirate, and it's pretty cool. Thanks, condom. <laughs> Thanks, yeah. condom. <laughs> I've, boy, I've said that a number of times. Thanks, condom. <laughs> <laughs> but have you, well, have you, I, you know my, my period's a little late oh nope there it is thanks condom <laughs> i mean but have you ever expressed those thanks by way of a letter to the company that manufactures them both uh I don't think you have yeah i, I really have. haven't uh I, really I, right dear trojan <laughs> right th first of all thank you for your reservoir tip that made it for a great joke <laughs> early on the podcast also thank you for all those kids that i neither wanted nor would have cared for yeah. um thanks yeah so anyway uh darth knob end um <laughs> dra drags drags brian into like the living room or something 
And then Rachel, our pregnant wife, appears in the doorway and she's like, Finally, finally is aroused from her slumber by the sounds of screaming that have been going on for three minutes. Right. And she just comes in and gives a good, ah, and then (laughs) takes off and starts to run out of the house, but slips in all the blood what came out of her husband a minute ago. And lands on her belly and the baby should have shot right out there. (laughs) The fact that the water didn't break and we didn't get just a sploosh at that point is a real, a real mistake on the part of writers. (laughs) A real misstep for the the classic (laughs) show slasher. (laughs) Yes. One of the rare missteps. The deft, the deft hands and keen storytelling minds of slasher. Mr. Trick here, Bo. (laughs) Yeah. Who would have guessed it? And, uh, anyway, so uh, the the killer uh, just closes the door, and and as she screams, we we kind of go to a black screen where we hear a baby crying. Yeah, and we see cops enter the house uh, a few minutes later, and here they find uh, Rachel and her husband all dead and carved up in in the hallway. Mm-hmm. And then inside is just this dude uh, who we will later <laughs> learn his name Tim. Um, yeah, it's, it's the most unassuming executioner's name ever. Yeah, they call me Tim. <laughs> and It's short for Timmy or Thomas. And he's just in a rocking chair with this newborn baby. And the cops are like, oh, I think he's crazy. And then we cut to some slasher credits. Yeah. And then we move, Duncan, to the present day where we <sighs> meet our heroes, Dylan <sighs> and Sarah. Hmm. <sighs> Right. This is like, now I get that. See, I'm down with the American horror story. I don't know if people know that, but I really am. And what I love about American horror story is the fact that they pick a theme each season for their anthology and they really kind of drag in as many different sources as they can. So if they do a slasher season, which they have done, for example, they pull in a ton of different movies, stuff, and all the rest to bring it all in. And they tend to, yeah, they sometimes do it a bit overboard and a bit OTT, but they tend to avoid massive cliche. And the way that Slasher is happy to embrace. Because, like, our, our, our arriving couple here who are, are returning to essentially the scene, they bought the house, the old murder house. <laughs> like, or did they buy it or inherit it? I, I was I have, kind of unclear on that. I thought no, it was... if, they, if they inherited it, it must have been lying there empty for ages because she's grown up. Like, yeah. Her parents are dead. Like, so <laughs> like her parents died then. So right, and she's too old for it to have been a trust situation where like yeah. you get the house when you're 18 or something like that. So instantly both me and you both are confused at the logistics of this, which means that they haven't even bothered to like they're just like, yeah, she's returning to the house. So she's she's moving back into the house that her parents were murdered in. And this is a, a cliche and a trope that I hate. And like horror cinema, I fucking hate it because this never happens. It would never happen. No one, no, no self-respecting human being would move back into the house that their parents were murdered in. Right, it just wouldn't happen. Uh, and she, this is the tip of a very deep iceberg of things that are questionable as fuck uh, in, the, in this story. <laughs> like, Sarah, really in is. particular makes mind-boggling decisions every step of the way oh yeah she's like she, I, I to the point where i'm i'm like did he did, did he like have like a like a, a choose your own adventure list of cards of actions she could do but made choices based on the roll of a dice <laughs> like, it's, just... <laughs> it's like when you replay mass effect and you're just an <laughs> asshole all the way through it oh, it's like shit. hey i'm gonna play this character as stupid as possible and and that's that's the NPC behind Sarah, but yeah. yeah sh- so they're in this car on their way to the murder home, murder house. Yeah, and <laughs> and her boyfriend or her husband, I uh, I should say, Dylan, is who is a reporter, as it, we're going to find out. <laughs> freelance reporter turned editor in chief. You know, mm-hmm. like you do. And, yep. <laughs> the, and he drops the exposition exposition of like, hey, you know, it's great that we're moving into the home that your parents were murdered in. <laughs> and she says, hi, to toy. <laughs> Big parents, which are just pictures and stories strangers tell, don't you know? <laughs> and <laughs> she look, the, the, the actress is Irish. And this accent that she is trying to wrestle with throughout this, sh- yeah. this show is out of control 
yeah, like, it changes scene to scene and mid sentence, and not only that as well. She kind of looks a little bit like, um, like in a certain light, if you squint your eyes, she looks like the chick who, uh, Morgan is, Webb from G Four TV. Yes, no, <laughs> the uh, Star Wars, the new movies, the oh, new... Daisy Ridley, yeah, a yeah, little she bit like really her. fucking does. She yeah. really to the point where I was like that. When did Star Wars go try to do the chronology in my head of did she do this first and then do Star Wars? Because the other That'd way around makes amazing. zero fucking sense. Um, <laughs> this is how we found her. Um, but the, <laughs> like, like she does a little bit, but yeah, you're right. It's, it's I like it's, this is the thing that frustrates me. If you hire an actress to be in your movie or in your TV show and she cannot do the accent that everyone else does around her just write in the script that she grew up living somewhere else as, yeah. as simple as it, it's not difficult and that way she doesn't have to act <laughs> like, like she's trying to desperately pronounce every word because she's still there's a, there's a couple of pregnant pauses in here where she's clear like <laughs> how, do, how do i say an a again uh <laughs> ah ah uh, uh, yeah <laughs> It's just like right them it it's it used to drive me up the wall all the time with, with, with Van Damme movies. Um like like where they were just like just make him Belgian. Like in your movies, what? and yes. you have to make him American because he's an American star and this is an American movie, and Americans will only watch movies about Americans. Right, I understand that. But let's just let's just say he grew up and then they finally realized that. And then it was interesting watching the movies to see how many ways we could segue in a childhood spent in Belgium. Uh <laughs> why not do this here where she's like, Oh, I it's a it's weird I didn't met you when it, when I moved back to Dublin, I did. You know, yeah, like something uh, our, our mum or dad has a sister or a brother who lives in Ireland that she had to go and live with to be sure. raised. <laughs> like any fucking thing, anything that distracts me from the fact that she cannot pull off the accent she's trying to do. Yeah. And, and so anyway, she says, you know, me parents are just folks in pictures and stories <laughs> strangers tell. And after all, it's a free house. And so they arrive in this town of Waterbury. Yep. And they pass by a, a newspaper stand where the headline of the local paper is like, daughter of the worst massacre ever is returning to town, everybody. Literally, literally, <laughs> it is the full gossip of the town. Like, everyone is now going to have their own little say over how wrong it is that she moves back. Yeah. Um, it's a very judgy town. <laughs> like, like, really, like, literally, if that's, you, if that's your, like, opening headline in your papers, I argue that not a lot's happening in your town. <laughs> yeah, somebody got the judgment ring. Um, <laughs> it's running the local paper, apparently. Judgment! <laughs> Humility! <laughs> honor! <laughs> judgment. <laughs> so... Anyway, uh, they they get to the house, but before they go inside, uh, Sarah's like, I just want you to know, it doesn't matter what happened here before, only what we do next. And then they start getting a little flirty, and Dylan yeah. is like, yeah, let's get it on right here in the middle <laughs> middle of the yard. Who gives a shit? This is our house this is, now. This is, this is our yard. This is our fuck yard. We oh. shall fuck here. And also, Duncan, following one of the grand traditions of this here show, mm -hmm. they ought to be fucking. They should be fucking like, and, and trust me, the like what we'll find out very, very quickly is that it turns out this house had a lot of fucking happening in it, um, not with the people you would expect, but um, yeah, they, they did say to like have a, a romantic kiss to celebrate the start of a new life together in a new house, and fucking judgy, fucking preachy pants across the road tending to our garden, um. She's like, is, is it Mrs. Deagle and Gremlins? Yeah, her name is like, Vera McBride. Is is this Vera character's McBride. name? Like, like, do we all have Irish names here? Yeah, every yeah, every she's a fucking redhead as well, right? She's yeah. the most Irish of all. Right, they're just out Irishing each other. She, you should be ashamed. Oh, you should be ashamed. I should I? I, I should I? Um, so. <laughs> but yeah, Vera McBride comes out of her house and she's like, have some goddamn shame. And I love and, the fact that he's like, is she serious? Right. And it turns out she is, Mo. Well, <laughs> yeah, and she's like, there, there are children who live in this neighborhood. There's a death curse on that house. 
And <laughs> Ooh, this house is a death curse. Yeah. Crazy Vera just Oh, that house has a death curse. It does. Oh, Crazy Vera how is did, the best character. How did Crazy Vera get in her pantry? I Holy can't, yeah, can't, wait, can't wait till she's found dead in your pantry. That is the weirdest part of the the original Friday the Thirteenth, where Crazy Ralph shows up in their pantry for no good reason, where they've got they got to shoo him out like a rat. Like, get on out of here, Crazy Ralph. Yeah, it's like, it's like he's like I don't think they took my threat in the ten cent or seriously when I mentioned this town has a death curse. You know what will back up and legitimize my sentence? Appearing from a pantry. Also, <laughs> being, discovered, being discovered, being discovered in a pantry because he doesn't he doesn't open the door and go, "Aha, it is I, the Oracle, <laughs> Crazy Ralph." <laughs> he right. opens the door and he's and how long has he been sitting in there for? It's like you know, the. You'll be soon. <laughs> It's like the uh, the the native people from Crystal Skull that hide in the <laughs> columns and are just waiting for somebody to come by. Like Crazy Ralph is like following in their footsteps of. He's in that pantry. He's, he's checking his watch as well because Mrs. Crazy Ralph expects him home for a nice kipper dinner. Um, and it's a death curse, and also the roast is out of the oven at seven. <laughs> I've rearranged all your tins. <laughs> That roast has a has a blood curse because I like it medium rare. <laughs> I'm like, is this freaking cranky? Like, instantly I'm like that, right? She's going to be a character we're not going to like. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't worry, like, Doug. Don't don't. You don't have to wait too long. I like, like they double down on this hard and fast, right? So they're not like we'll get to it. You know, we'll. we'll We'll draw out the mystery of what her issue is over a few episodes. And they're like, no, nope, can't be bothered. <laughs> this is a show that almost immediately pays off everything it sets up. It has no patience for narrative. Yeah. Which like, I don't tension. Dis I don't dislike. I will say this about this this particular episode here. Like, Slasher do not give a fuck when it comes to just straight up murdering people. Um, which is he is he pro to the show, but also a huge fucking negative because you are in a town where a serial killer murdered like this lovely family, maybe, um, and you know apparently also performed a cesarean and removed the child, cleaned off said child, uh, and then sat swaddling and coddling the child until it went to sleep. Um, you know this has happened before, yet murder is going to happen in this town really quickly. And what is like baffling is how unperturbed the police department are by the whole fucking thing <laughs> like right. oh, yeah <laughs> put a pin in that because we are going to talk about the efficacy of the police in the town of waterbury which is zero, <laughs> zero. <laughs> but it, so yeah so vera mcbride is like there's kids in this neighborhood don't fuck on the lawn and dylan is is like well, let's give her a show but they end up going in the house and yeah. so inside she so, does see there's lots of there's lots of rooms in there to do it and i'm like that yeah i mean she's not wrong <laughs> right yeah there's that a, sounds like a challenge <laughs> and and oh they are up to the challenge or at least dylan mm -hmm. is um <laughs> so inside the, like sarah goes in and they're looking at that entry hall where her parents got butchered up and she's kind of pausing there and then she's like let's go explore the rest of the house there could be a leprechaun and <laughs> And said, and, and she so, doesn't say that, ladies and gents. Don't listen to Bo. She, she doesn't mention a leprechaun. She does say, let's go explore. No, mm -hmm. you can trust me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but right away, as you said, they're pretty much like, hey, we should be fucking. Duncan and Bo mm -hmm. are right. And so, uh, she's like, hi, Tutai, we should be fucking. <laughs> and so they go upstairs and they they're fucking in the, in the like the master room to see if that's the right room for uh, their bedroom. It's like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, you know. They need to find the, they need to find the room that's just right. Yeah, <laughs> when the sun comes in, it hits my back hair just right. Yeah. Um. So there's some close up shots of like backs and faces, and then Sarah comes. So good for her. And then well done. yeah, well and, done on him actually. Right. Get the job done, son. And after Sarah is is like, huh. Boy, that was some good fucking. You should get to fuck out, and <laughs> and she he's like what? And, he, and she's like, yeah, weren't you supposed to go to that paper of yours? Mm -hmm. And um, he's like, yeah, but you know, we were just fucking, and we could do that again if you want. And she's like, no, no, you just go on and get the hell out of here. I'm gonna go explore the town. Maybe visit that fella Cam I know. And he's like, who's Cam? And she's like, don't worry about it. A guy that <laughs> yeah. maybe I fucked back in the day, or maybe I didn't. 
and <laughs> he's the one I inherited this Irish accent from. <laughs> So it was a curse that was passed along. Uh, like, it's it was, like it follows. Like, she slept with him and then she had the curse of the Irish accent. Right. I didn't always talk like this, you know. Uh, so she she takes the car and he takes a bike uh, what, what, to work. Why, why is our main character here got a slight bit of the Irish beat cop about her? <laughs> yeah. What, Georgie, what are you doing, huh? What are, what are you doing with Capone? Huh? Oh, she's slipping in every, every every other word. You're just bringing it in, and just, it's, it's just getting me. Just catch me just right now. Just catch it's, me just right. Look, no one, no one. In fact, we promised our listeners long ago these accents will not be good. No, they're never good, and they'll never go away either. No, so. they're they're bad and persistent. <laughs> We're going to keep doing them so long that you will think it's how you're supposed to impersonate these people. Yeah, when and that's how we win. When you go to Ireland and people don't talk like that, you're going to be like, I was lied to. <laughs> they, was... they lied to me. <laughs> they called it edutainment. I thought there was somewhere in that education. I mean, no. th- there's some, but not much. It's enough. No. <laughs> it's it's legally enough to call it edutainment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> enough to classes education but not enough to class to charge for it <laughs> that's right that's right it's uh it, it, it's not master class level it's more like novice class <laughs> which is free on youtube just like this uh Ooh. so anyway we speaking of the police there is a crazy woman wandering around in a in her night clothes yep and the crowd of waterbury the the populace is just gathered around to see what this crazy nutbird is going to do next yep and here we are introduced to Cam, who is the police officer, and uh, or a police officer in this town. And this woman, who I, I think her name is Mrs. Peterson, oh, could be anything. <laughs> Cam is just like, "Hey, you want a blanket or something?" <laughs> and she's like, "Have you seen Muriel? Have you seen Muriel?" And he's like, "Um, uh, no, I think she's dead or something." And you're crazy, I think, but you want this blanket? And then this crazy woman just kind of wanders off of the the crime scene. Mm-hmm. And everyone just kind of forgets about her. They all just like, all right, well, I guess she's up to her old crazy tricks. <laughs> Best not to get involved. <laughs> and, and Sarah just comes walking up to Cam in the middle of this, you know, theoretically uh some sort of crime and or yeah there's there's no like uh nothing to see here don't cross the line <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she just it's... walks up hey <laughs> yeah it's just crazy lady wanders off sarah walks in and they do this walk and talk about her like opening a gallery in town and shit like that and they clearly knew each other when they were kids and uh she says listen pal i want to go see this tim winston fella <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's the fellow what's accused of murdering me parents, you know. Right. So this is the second. Let's put a pin in this second. Yes. Like this is the like as a storytelling premise here is you know just as pushing as pushing the, the the realms of believability to to breaking point is she's just moved back into the murder home mm-hmm. and now she wants to go and meet her parents' murders uh, murderer who is and it's like what. Yeah, who is just right around the corner. He's like in the building next door. He's, he's waving out the window. He's like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> you see from the window. Yeah, he looks up in the window. Did you mean me? <laughs> oh, let's not get into the, the clear. Yes, we'll get there. <laughs> that impression is 100% done. Is... <laughs> Hello, Sarah. <laughs> she transitions <laughs> <laughs> Do you file a stick of a lamb? <laughs> you, <laughs> you, you normally wear acts for women, but not today. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll get there. But <laughs> <laughs> what did Meg say to you? Meg's in the other cell. He said, "I hate your accent." I, however, do not. He- he said he could smell me potatoes. <laughs> I, for one, cannot. Are they Leonese? <laughs> oh, yes. So that's 
come together at confluence um but yeah so she she's asking <laughs> she's asking her cop friend <laughs> to, to go visit tim winston this murderer and uh he's like oh no that's such a good idea he's the most blasé response the response should be are you fucking crazy <laughs> right i could lose my job um <laughs> No, instead, he's just like, oh, no, oh, maybe later or something. And then this gets interrupted, thankfully for Cam, by uh, a couple, Justin and Robin, who are a gay mm. couple, yes. who are going to be Sarah's landlords for her gallery that she's yes. opening up. And Robin- Always a gallery. They're always artistic types. Yeah. Well, you know, mm. when, you, when you've grown up in the shadow of a double murder- uh, it unlocks your creative potential, Duncan. Ah, uh, this is why I'm not good at drawing. This is why. Oh, I, I wish my parents were murdered. <laughs> what? <laughs> wouldn't it be great, D Duncan? Fortunately, we offer such a service here at Duncan and Bo's Orphans Are Us. <laughs> we'll make you an orphan at any age. <laughs> Grandma's sticking around a little longer than you expected and is sitting yeah. on that fortune high voltage <laughs> um <laughs> duncan deeds done dirt cheap mm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway <laughs> robin is the more flamboyantly gay of the of the two because there's always he's actually one. a character that i deeply love because he's the voice of the audience here he, yeah he kind of is and he comes in and he's like girl you are way more normal looking than i thought you would be i thought you'd be fucking crazy and and she's like, listen, uh, you don't happen to know about anything about me neighbor. She seems like a really wound up bitch, if you ask me. <laughs> and they're like, you mean Vera McBride? Oh, shit, girl. <laughs> and, and then Justin, who who isn't as flamboyant, is like, look, she's just this lonely old lady and she's harmless. And then Robin's like, but annoying. Yeah. <laughs> He is so over the top. It, like, it's the one well, character he, that's he, having he, fun. Yeah, he does literally say it here. He's like, one, like, why, why the fuck would you move back into the, your parents' says Everyone yeah. wants to know. It's the talk of the town. I'm like, yeah, yes, this is what everyone should be saying to her face. Why are you here? Like, no good will come of this. <laughs> right. And she's just like, oh, to toy dates. They, they're just strangers I never met. And yeah. he's like, yeah, but they were killed there. Yeah, right they, were, the they, were, <laughs> they were murdered there and you were birthed by a serial killer. Yeah, yeah. Like, right here in this town. Like, did you know he was right here? Hello, hello. <laughs> I'm right window. here. Hello there, yes. I remember the night well. It was a Tuesday. <laughs> so. <laughs> Tell me, have your parents stopped screaming? Um, <laughs> so, so, anyway. Um finally robin uh kind of pissing justin off a little bit is like girl we are about to have a party you want to come and justin's like yeah i guess i can thaw out some more steaks yeah how about so, you talk to me about this before you yeah start like the fucking fortune that i'm i'm you know that I, I, I just feed the neighborhood is that what we're saying <laughs> like, and also she just moved back into her crazy crazy fucking dead parents house right <laughs> i mean we don't know if this if she is a crazy person she could be a crazy person yeah and <laughs> So she goes into the gallery. They take off. Dylan shows up to this newspaper where he is now the editor in chief, and, and, and it's just a room. It's yeah, a brick room with a couple of tables. It is not too dissimilar to the room that the Edge broke into at the start of Money Plane, or the one that another Edge uh, sang the song "Numb" in. Yeah. Oh, hey, hey, poor mm -hmm. mm. Too much. But as is it like. It's one of these unrealistic, like, this is, you know, it's like police stations are the same and, <laughs> like, and airports actually are all the same in movies and TV shows. This is not what they look like. This is like the coolest, hippest, fucking hipster news room ever. Because everyone, like, all the desks are a little bit too tidy and everyone's a little bit too dressed up and no one looks like they've shown up at their work drunk, which instantly <laughs> means they're not a reporter. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, you know, like, and so there's this this hot lady named Allison 
who may or may not be Dylan's boss. I'm not exactly sure what her job is. Well, yeah, because yeah, like at first I thought, well, he's the editor in chief, so he's right. responsible for this. But she seems to be pulling all the shots. Either that she is the most ballsy employee ever, right? Closely <laughs> the, the, vying yeah. for position from the fucking start, because she just seems to be busting his balls from the moment it comes in. Right. She's got a lot of resumes out right now. Like she doesn't plan <laughs> to be here for very long, so she's like, "Fuck it, I'm just gonna say whatever I want. We'll see how it goes." Because you're right. Right. Like, as soon as he Dylan comes in, it's like, I'm, you know, I'm not really crazy about my wife being on the front page of the newspaper because of her moving back. And Allison's just like, look, I don't know what you learned in J school is what she calls it, which made me want to punch her. Uh, but <laughs> I don't want you to learn in J school. But when the because the, journalism's a big word for a journalist, <laughs> well, you know, you like to shorten things up. You know, it's all journalism by by tweet now. And but she says like, hey, when the the victim of the town's most gruesome murder moves back into the town's like haunted murder house, <laughs> yes, it makes the news. I'm like, all right, I'll I'll go with you that far, Allison. But yeah. front page, well, yeah, front front page when the editor in chief is the partner of said pair. I mean. <laughs> yeah, this is in the community <laughs> section, you know the yeah. That's like that's like. That's like Fox News starting out with the the headline, Rupert Murdoch's a bad man. You know? Yeah. Like, so you fucking, <laughs> she fucking right, you gotta that. bury that shit. And <laughs> yeah, it becomes it becomes a gossip piece on like one of the back pages. Um but yeah, like she's like just all in. And the thing is like she's she's totally like and he's face about it, which I kind of love. <laughs> She's like straight away, like you, like clearly you got the job that I was up for, and I am not going to give you an easy ride of it. Yeah, and it, so when he gives, kind of pushes back on on her statement, she's like, "Look, everything will be back to normal soon. As soon as your wife, you know, fades out of popular consciousness, and nobody gives a shit about murder anymore, you'll be fine." Hmm. Also, how many papers are in this small town? I don't know, I think you have to fight for your demographic here. <laughs> Like, yeah you know it's like right. how do people are going to stop buying your newspaper because you're not talking about the girl who moved back to her house like by day four um at least she's like when this gossip dies down this gossip like, like is newsworthy for a day and then it's not yeah right yeah and 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 so that's kind of what she's saying is like and this will all blow over tomorrow meanwhile sarah is stalking <laughs> crazy vera mcbride <laughs> By just driving slowly in her car behind her. Behind her. <laughs> yeah. Like like she's about to kidnap her or something. Mm. And then finally pulls up and, and rolls down her window and she's like, Hi, Titoy. My name's Sarah. I lived in the house next door. You know, we we almost did it on the lawn earlier. <laughs> and she says, You want to ride? I know where you live. You know, <laughs> which is kind of its own veil threat. Mm -hmm. And Vera completely shuts that shit down where she's like, Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Your mother was a whore. Yeah, and like <laughs> God struck her down. And you're like, whoa, lady. Like, like, like she has some opinions and she is fucking sharing them. Yeah, this old woman has been waiting for somebody to ask her about Sarah's mother. Yeah, <laughs> like someone to move into that house and or ask about Sarah's mother. Honestly, or ask the direction to the local town square, <laughs> or ask her the time. Or you know, like, you're, you're a whore. She literally anyone asks her anything, you get the you know someone accidentally calls her home. You know someone tries to like Jehovah's Witness shows up and asks her if she's heard the good news. Like that woman that lived over there was a fucking whore. Oh, it's so good. And so Sarah <laughs> just like, all right, fine, walk home, yeah, bitch. And <laughs> so she takes off. And later on, Sarah is kind of hooking up their TV while Dylan just watches them. Which I really like. I, th I like that move where he's just like, no, no, no. I'm gonna, eat, I'm gonna eat these wings. Go on and and, and fix our shit. And <laughs> so bizarre. <laughs> and while she's trying to hook this up and failing miserably, he's just like, hey, you know that hot lady I work with? Uh, you haven't met her yet, I guess, Allison. Anyway, I may or may not work for her, and she wants to go to dinner. And uh, Allison, or I'm sorry, not Allison. Sarah's like, oh, we can't go there. Well, I, I'm supposed to be having dinner with the gays. <laughs> Which, in fairness, always a smart move. If you have an option to go to some dinner date oh, with God, your yeah. What one's going to be more exciting? Yeah. Right. Um, better music, better food. Yeah. Anyway. 
Uh, better topics of conversation. Right. Better uh, dressed. Yes. I mean, they're going to talk they're going to talk garbage about you as soon as you leave because yeah, but, that's that's just what you're buying yeah but for the moment you're in there you are their world yeah it, <laughs> I mean, they're, it's like olive garden when you're there you're family <laughs> but unlike olive garden as soon as you leave they're like did you see what that bitch was wearing so <laughs> you know did you see him have the third serving of breadsticks? Yeah, God. listen, fatty. How about you lay <laughs> off the carbs? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> breadsticks and cheesecake? Really, Carl? All right. <laughs> it's your life. And waistline. It's the episode of <laughs> Simpsons where um, like Homer goes to the, the all-you-can-eat Captain Seafood place. And <laughs> He's not human, I tell you. <laughs> Does that sound like all this man could eat? When they have him on the stand and he went to two other buffets after. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, the, oh, yeah. It's like the Simpsons are a pretty funny show. Anyway, so <laughs> Dylan is like, nah, you're plugging in the HDMI cable wrong. And and I'm about to get a game console, so you're going to need to switch inputs and shit. And Sarah's just like, hoi your toy. Listen, enough about your fantasy game consoles. <laughs> We don't have that kind of money. The only reason we're living here is because it was free, don't you know? And yep. But she's yep. like, hey, do you think that Vera next door, you think she hates me? <laughs> and also... <laughs> she, he looks at the window and she's standing on the other side of the road mouthing the words, I fucking hate you. Right, like just across the way, like dragging her finger across her throat. <clears throat> yeah, giving her the stink eye and whatnot. <laughs> and... <laughs> I'm going to kill you. <laughs> like charades he did, like, you know. <laughs> sorry, sorry, visual joke there. Sorry, everyone. Um, watch watch, the, watch the show. We're going to have to get used to this split medium. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, anyway. Uh, there was some charades happening. You, you Watch uh, the show. You'll enjoy it. It's uh, available. <laughs> Uh, available on YouTube and, and Leg uh, YouTube.com forward slash Legion Podcast, Twitch TV, Legion Podcast. Anyway, so, uh, but while Sarah is, is bitching about all these HDM ca HDMI cables and, and Dylan is not helping her at all. No, he's, he's actually surprisingly bad at all this shit. Yeah, when she talks about Vera thinking that she's the spawn of Satan, the word spawn is one that this actress has a real problem with. She cannot spawn. get the... <laughs> the spawn. No, uh, spawn, 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 pump, and <laughs> she, it, like, it, it just gets totally out of her control. Like, the mm -hmm. reins have come off the accent during this scene. It is one of, it was one of my favorite moments when I was first watching the show, because it was one of the first times where I was like, she is not, not only is she not American, she is not North American. Yeah. You know, she comes from a she comes from a different land, Duncan. Um <laughs> anyway. So uh she asked Dylan though, like, listen, now that you're a big fancy pants newspaperman, maybe you can poke around and see if there's anything about my parents' death that I don't know about. She's literally they are in that they have been in this house together as a couple for as long as it took to fuck and as long as it's taken to have an HDMI lead situation conversation and she has been in this town less than a day and she has already upset the neighbor who clearly thinks her mother was a whore right and struck down by god <laughs> uh, but also at the same time been to see her friend the police officer and said that she wants to go and see the man who murdered her parents and now she's pressurizing her boyfriend slash husband slash fiance whoever he is to use his power in the press to dig up information that she might not be privy to. Right. Yes. And this is like, this is short order here. This show ain't wasting time. It's like that. We need to get all this shit out in episode number one. And I'm like, do we? <laughs> like, yeah, right. Do, do we actually need to do that? Because like, if we get all this on the table just now, what we're going to do for the remaining however many episodes are in this show? I don't even know how many episodes are in season one. I, I think it's 22, Duncan. Uh, oh. No, no, no. I think it's like 10 or 12. We're fine. We're fine. Oh. We're fine. Um, but yeah, and, and so immediately Dylan is like, yeah, let's go. I've got my laptop upstairs. We'll go look right now. And, <laughs> yeah. 
and upstairs they, on the bed. <laughs> right. Because, you know, I was, I was listening to this podcast and they were saying that we should be fucking. And mm-hmm. they made a lot of good points. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so it, it he finds this inter- interview with Tim Winston, the murderer, uh, where uh, it's just him being interviewed by the police and saying, her father was a Judas Iscariot. Her mother was the whore of Babylon. <laughs> and how they got this, I don't know. Like, how this is just, like, available to him via the press on his laptop. <laughs> yeah, it it does Make him a police officer. He's a police officer transferring to, you know, the, the local town. Or have her friend Cam the cop be the one to deliver this. Right. Yeah, you're right. And it's... anyway, so um, immediately she's like, hoi to toy, that's shocking. And... <laughs> And Dylan's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's turn this off. Uh, this was a bad idea. And how about we go for a walk? And she's like, I'll tell you what. How about you go fuck yourself? And uh, <laughs> I'll go for a walk. And you can just stay here. Because quite frankly, I'm sick of you. Yeah, it's the great, great thing of, let me suggest an idea that you're going to go and do without me. <laughs> yeah, that's 100% what it is. She She's just like, hmm. Now, I'll tell you what. I, I've been weighing your idea about going for a walk. And I've decided it sounds like a great idea, so long as you're not there, you cheap motherfucker. And <laughs> so she takes off. She just leaves. Again, one of the head-scratching decisions she makes throughout the course of the show is just like, you know, boy, I've just been delivered quite an emotional shock, and my neighbor seems a bit unstable. How about I just go walking alone at night through a neighborhood I don't know? Yeah, plus I've been in this house for, you know, this house that I couldn't wait to get to, um, I, I seem to be finding tons of reasons not to be staying in it. <laughs> yeah. And so on this walk, Sarah, it, like there are fireworks going off because of Halloween fireworks. Mm. I don't know why. Uh, I, don't, I don't even know what day it's supposed to be, but like the kids are dickheads in the street. <laughs> yeah. So Sarah turns around and she sees a guy dressed up like, you know, Darth Penis. And yep. sh- she's like, you're sick. And then Darth Helmet chases her. <laughs> and this... Keep fighting, assholes. <laughs> right. <laughs> that sudden stop scene is the funniest thing in Spaceballs by a mile. Yeah. When, when it pulls up the helmet. Hi. I, I, how are, I'm fine. How are you? I do, I, I do like uh, <laughs> You heard me. Calm the desert. Find anything yet? We ain't found shit. <laughs> that is probably the best joke of the movie yes uh but anyway enough about space balls uh so dylan ends up finding uh sarah out on the streets because you know he he was like after a while he was just like that telling me to stay here it was my idea to go for a walk i'm going after her. and so he does go after her mm-hmm. and sorry that is this is Somebody is somebody calling me. I apologize. Um, <laughs> Do they not know you're live streaming, Bo? I apparently not. Uh, also, I didn't have it turned down, which is a real pain in the ass. Um, <laughs> anyway, so Dylan finds her, and they run across some young punks uh, that are on bikes, and one of them's got a baseball bat and shit like that. And Dylan ends up confronting them. Uh, he's like, "Hey, you uh, hood hoods and hooligans and ragamuffins." And <laughs> one of them is like, fuck you, Dylan. And I'm like, how does he know his name? Did he yeah. introduce, oh, hello, my name is Dylan, and I'm here to threaten you tonight on behalf of my yeah. wife. You've probably uh, at least seen her based on the threats you were making. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, th- after confronting him, uh, one of the thugs, uh, like they all end up taking off, and one of the thugs is just like, hey, I'm not done being a hooligan tonight. Mm. And the rest are like, ah, we're going to go study. And he's like, you pussies, learning. <laughs> Studying's for losers. Right. And so uh, he grabs the baseball bat out of one of his friend's hands, and he's on a bike, and he's like, all right, you guys go get educated and stuff. I'm going to go knock down some mailbox boxes repercussion free. And so he that's exactly what he does. He goes biking he through the town, knocking mailboxes off the poles. And then he like literally runs into Black Schlong, and <laughs> and the killer 
just a, one of my favorite moves. It's almost like a John Wick of serial killers, where he just grabs this kid's bat out of his hand oh, and yeah. cracks his skull with it. Oh, like <laughs> beats give me that. Beats him, takes a takes a baseball bat off him, and then beats him to death. Like to death, and I'm like that. Well, I give you credit, Slasher, because I did not think, did not think this show was going to do this. And then, as if the show was like that, if well, if Duncan, if you love this, you're going to love this. We then cut to a scene of him walking up an empty residential street, houses on both sides, just dragging this dead body in full costume, just dragging the dead body of this kid behind him like it's a sack of potatoes. For yeah, <laughs> just yeah, <laughs> it's not like a sled that you've been out and it's been stuck. just like up the middle of the street. And I'm thinking, one, this isn't too late. Because mm. she's been it for a walk. Plus, there's a whole lot of this night still to happen, um, as you will see. Um, but yeah, she's just like fucking like walking with this body behind them all out the street, and I'm just like, what are we watching? <laughs> like, yeah. what's going on? <laughs> so, and there's like one other mention of this kid later in the episode. It's like, oh right, that kid. Yeah, that that death that happens in the show that we don't revisit. Yeah. <laughs> So, all right, so Sarah then goes to visit Horrible Lecter, as I've called him. Uh, yeah, because uh, the other thing we're saying is no, no news happens in this town. Do you know what's front page the following day? Child missing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> which it, ki- it kind of is, but we just don't ever see that. We don't see it. That's what yeah. we're, That's the thing. Like That should be the talk in the newsroom. Yes. That should be like, we should be, there should be a high bustle. Of, like, she should not be going to see the serial killer because the police are busy. Like, you know, like, like actively busy. We don't have time to give you this you know, this tour of the serial killer wing of our small right. town jail. To set up uh, a know, speed date with the murderer of your parents. Yeah, like, plus, ha- check like, back after we found the kid. Like, why is this guy in a local prison? This guy's in a high-max security right. prison somewhere far away from this fucking town. Right. It, it, oh. Right, none of this adds up. But anyway, yeah, yeah. she goes to, vi- to visit uh, Tim Winston. <laughs> and she he sits down across her, and he looks kind of like... Uh, Bruce Greenwood a little bit. Yes. It, but with longer, like, he's got kind of long blonde hair, and he just looks like like Bruce Greenwood light, but has been smoking and drinking a lot. Yeah, it looks like he's about to pick up a guitar and sing you a song about how he lost his love to a cattle rancher back in 1973. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, 73 was a, a great year. <laughs> but, like, like, but they sit down. He has apparently no like proper security shackles on him there's no police officer made this is a nice room as well this is like <laughs> it's two steps away from being like a library it's like a nice big wooden table they're sitting opposite he is not properly secured in place with any yeah. any any shackles that i would consider like appropriate for someone who murdered two people in cesarean the baby like <laughs> And yeah, and then they just leave. Like the cops come in, are like, "Well, here he is," and then they yep. just leave. They fuck off and leave. <laughs> like, yeah. no, here's the buzzer that you press if he says something. This is how you get us back into the room. Not like you get like. And apparently, she just got unlimited time with him. Like, yeah. there's no right, no more than ten minutes with this guy or anything. They just is the they do they do not give a fuck. Yeah. They do not give a fuck here. It's it's right. It's fucking crazy. And. And so she sits down at this like long metal table across from him mm-hmm. and, and Sarah is like, listen, I've had quite a go of things, you know, what with you murdering my parents and all. And I guess I just need some closure, you know? And he's just like, yes, yes. Tell me about your parents, Sarah. Quid pro quo. And uh, he's like, if you want to get to the bottom of this, look up a man named Lewis Friend. Ask him. <laughs> Ask him what was happening in your in your parents' life, Sarah. Well, we're laughing just now, but he does literally give her a clue. Yeah, like he, he I've got gives it right her here. an oblique clue yeah. reference, which is done in the form of riddle and rhyme. <laughs> yeah, he he says, "No one puts a lamp in the in a cellar, Sarah, to see the light." And she's like. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid this was a mistake you're an asshole and then she just fucks off and leaves 
And with no discernible reason, like the minute that he starts to, I guess, tell her the things that in theory she's been asking about. Yeah. She's like, I've had enough. And go, go, go to the shit. And yeah. then she's at the door. And he's, oh, the whole thing is. <laughs> Bull to the like, shite. Yeah. The, the, uh, once again, why does this like from a, from a storytelling point of view, why mm. does this need to come from him? Why can this not just be something that she's st- like she's in the house, she's doing a, a bit of exploring. She said she wanted to do that. Why does she not stumble in to find what she does find here? Um, out with this conversation with this guy, or maybe the neighbor says something, you know, your filthy whore mother was always hiding things in the basement. Yeah. You know, or, or something along those lines. But no, we have to have this whole protracted scene, which by the way, it's not the only time we're going to have this kind of, you are now my student, <laughs> student in the, the, the solving of crime, because me as this psychopathic serial killer, apparently understand all about the mind of serial killer. It's just fucking right, it- gash. The fact that they were just like, hey, you know what's a good movie? Silence of the Lambs. How about we do that in the middle of our our show? And they're like, The yes. balls. The yes. fucking balls on Slasher. This fucking low-rank Canadian show to fucking <laughs> sit there and say, you know what? Let's end. Like, it just it makes no fucking sense. But it's- Sarah's like, She's out there. It's Sarah, isn't it? I keep I keep wanting to call her uh Katie, but Katie's the name of the actress. Uh, Sarah, she's like the bill to the shit. She's gonna go home uh-huh. and then she's gonna use this cryptic clue to start raking about the house. And I mean I'm gonna put it this way, Bo. See if you go back to your old parents' house and you find a box. And that box contains some VHSs. Now, one, you shouldn't have a VHS player because it's 2016. Um, but two, like you find a box with VHSs with just names written on it. You don't play them, do you? I well, not without <laughs> fully expecting it you to be them- because it's hidden. It's a hidden box of VHS tapes and a camera. You give it to someone else yes. first. Watch and this say, and tell me what it is. Yes. Yeah. Hundred percent right there's a very good chance that this might have my parents fucking on it. A and good I don't chance? Really know How about a what... 100% chance there is fucking <laughs> on these videotapes? And I don't really know my parents. I never met them. I've only seen a couple of Polaroids of them. And the last thing I want to see is the throes of them in ecstasy. I just don't want to yeah. see it. I don't want to see the night I was conceived on camera. <laughs> it, yes, exactly. Could you please? Could you please? But no, Sarah's like... Sarah, once again, doing the choose your own adventure by dice, picks the, the worst decision here, which is, do I watch these videotapes? Why, well, yes, I do. <laughs> right, immediately puts, uh, a, the it's a tape labeled uh, Peter McBride. Now, she, the, the, the ball's on this bitch, right? Because she is sleeping with the neighborhood. And not only is she sleeping with the neighborhood, she is writing on the tapes their names, not code names. I hear that, everybody? We're using code names. Yeah, like, like, not like nothing like you know, like, uh, I, I don't, I, you know, <laughs> Long John or something like you know, anything on that that could be or misc. That's a good one. You, if you put misc on something, people think miscellaneous. You don't want tax stuff. Yeah, <laughs> women's problems. Yeah, oh, I don't want to watch that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like you put anything on it, like you don't put the person's fucking name on it. Right. It is yes, you are right. That is that is bad sex tape etiquette. And then Sarah throws this Peter McBride tape in mm-hmm. and it's her mom getting fucked from behind by this dude Peter McBride and she looks at the camera and asks assumedly her husband Brian uh and she says, "Oh yeah, you like what you like that?" And so we are treated Duncan to uh, what is essentially a cuckold tape yes where and, and not like and peter by the way knows exactly where the camera is because he keeps looking at it and winking at it <laughs> yeah <laughs> it is <Hope> you <laughs> so just, two steps away from doing the bateman kiss of the bicep i mean it's fucking ridiculous for the record <laughs> we now know that Vera McBride's husband was fucking, I almost said Katie, Sarah's mother. Yes. And videotaped it. And 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 her father, Sarah's father, videotaped it. And there are, conservatively speaking, 
50 VHS tapes in this box. Yeah, which instantly now makes me on the side of Vera McBride. I'm like, that maybe she was onto something when she called her mother a whore that got the smite of. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? That... She may have a point here, Bo. Right. It, it's like Kiefer Sutherland in A Few Good Men. Like, <laughs> you know, she acted that without Anna and God was watching. Yeah. <laughs> and so night falls on Waterbury. Yeah, the Dylan. longest. The, this has been a, a day that has been full. Felt like she just had she had the worst day yesterday, um, and today is the next worst day. Yeah, because <laughs> every day it's like it, yeah, it's like climate change. Like every year is the hottest year on record. Mm -hmm. Like every day she has in Waterbury is the shittiest day that she has in Waterbury. It's amazing to think that the first day where she just got her house got yelled at by a neighbor. <laughs> And and fucked in her in, in her attic, and then met some some nice gay gentleman, and got yeah. her gallery. Like that's as good as it's went, ever going to be. Yeah, went went out for a walk and was approached by someone wearing the costume of her parents' murderer. <laughs> sure, yeah, that happened. But all the other stuff was good. And in this, it's just terrible. Like, oh, I talked to the killer of my parents, and he was it, like, gave me a riddle. And then yep. I found the <laughs> fuck tape that my mom and dad made with a neighbor. And now I got to look at his wife, look at Vera in the face, knowing yeah. that I've seen her husband's dick, and yeah. he's probably been dead 30 years. Yeah. So that dick doesn't even exist anymore, and I've seen it's, it. It's dust. It's dust dick. It's, right. It's a dust dick. And <laughs> so uh, when Dylan gets home, Vera is just like, she ain't in there. And he's yep. like, the fuck? And it, uh, she's like, yeah, she took off a couple hours ago. She looked upset. I didn't bother to ask why, but I was watching. I was <laughs> watching. And then she says, a man ought to keep a tight leash on his wife. And, and Dylan's I, was, just, like, I was I was thinking to myself, oh, really? Yeah, well. <laughs> Can uh, we speak to Peter? <laughs> goes both ways, right? Like uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe wives need to be asking some questions of their husbands, too. Am I right, Vera? <laughs> And Vera's all smug. She goes back in her house, just like, yeah, hey, got him. And I'm like, fuck you, Vera. She's got an abacus in her house where she just moves the points across every time she gets one over on her neighbors. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> St stole a kid's neighbor kid's basketball. Click. <laughs> it's like Bushimi and Monster House. Um, anyway, so we, we cut to the party where Robin and Justin are, are hosting uh, and, and seem to be having a perfectly lovely time. Uh, Sarah rushes in and is like, everyone having a good time? Good, this, this'll this stop it. And so she says, Cam, I need to talk to you. And th then she leave, like she and Cam go outside, and Justin is like, you know, she said, I don't mean to be rude, and yet that was really fucking rude. <laughs> Yeah, maybe we shouldn't. This is maybe why we shouldn't be inviting people that weren't originally on the guest list. Isn't Robin. That right, Robin? Yeah. <laughs> and, and, yeah. And Robin is just like, she was rude. I like her. Yeah. <laughs> Robin was like, yay. Yeah. <laughs> so, just, so happy. <laughs> mm, yeah, looks like a messy bitch moved into the neighborhood. Uh, <laughs> I like the looks of this. So, <laughs> and Ro so by the way, uh, Robin, definitely a bottom. Um, yes. Oh God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so well, we don't know. We don't know. What we'll we do. don't know, but I, I know where my money is <laughs> and my penis. Um, so Vera <laughs> McBride is at her house, like going through her fridge, eating some cold pizza straight out of the box. And that's, uh, yeah, she's like, like <laughs> well, that's my, well, right. I am done with the cold pizza, right? And I've, I think I've had this conversation before with you, actually, Probably. weirdly enough, all of these. Like, because the temperature in Scotland's maybe not the same as it is in America, like, second day pizza is pizza that has not been in the fridge. It's been out in the counter. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Overnight. We don't put, put no fridge, and let alone take it from the fridge and eat it fucking straight from the fridge. Yeah. I'm just going to say this might be the reason why, like, they're hypothesizing later on why events played out for what we're about to discuss on Vera. And I'm going to say, this should be in the equation. This is this is punishable by the event that happens to her, right? Yeah. Just saying, fucking cold pizza from the fridge. Um. Yeah, Yeah. It, it, right. It, like, you don't have a toaster oven, you don't have a microwave, you can't throw this in for 20 seconds. What the fuck? 20 is seconds is all it will take. Yeah. One slice of pizza. <laughs> it, it will be at least warm by then. You yeah. Got a lot of vegetables the, hot. Takes the chill off it. You know yeah. what I mean? Uh, but and then she just spits it out in her sink. 
Like she yeah, makes which one is, bite. Yeah. Which is what you're going to do because it's fucking cold and it's wet. Because right. it's been in a fridge. Yeah, she's immediately like, bleh, 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 and just like lets it fall out into the sink like a child. And then, <laughs> then she drifts into another room where she <laughs> rifles through some unlabeled manila folders like that matters. Mm-hmm. And then wanders in the living room where the video of her husband <laughs> fucking is playing. Yeah, because she went to the party and didn't switch it off. Also, she left a while ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, who's house is this? No, no, th- <laughs> no, it's Vera's house. Like, somebody broke into Vera's oh, house. Oh, right, and is I, see, I'm not, I, knew, I knew I made a mistake here. So, yeah, the killer's, the killer's like, uh-huh. Right, right. It's a real, like, eels situation of, like, bet hey, you we're thought, I bet you thought the most distasteful thing that was going to happen was that pizza. Wait till you see this. Right. You remember all those, like, you knew this happened, but have you seen the video? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Maybe she was holding the camera. No, she wasn't holding the camera. No, it was de- definitely the husband. So yeah. then Sarah ba- back at the Maybe party explains his. Maybe explains his blasey approach to the condom man appearing at the door. Oh, you've came early, <laughs> right? Another Maybe man so. For like, like she's pregnant. She's pregnant, so it's not going to be. Gl- it's not going to yeah. be good, nice and glamorous, but bound to come out. Hey, I mean, you're already dressed for the occasion, am I right, rubber man? <laughs> Huh? And huh? you come here, have a handful of sweets to give to kids. Hey, uh, we oh, got a handful of poppers and some uh, cocaine <laughs> uh, in in the main room. So if you know, if you want to get down, we don't know whose kid this is. Let me yeah, just say that poison. Well, that's I think that's, that's maybe something yes. that's going to come out from this. So a hundred percent, like yes, she will turn out to be some uh, probably the, the killer's kid. Tim's, it's gonna be no, it's gonna be Tim's kid. Oh, that would be awesome. Uh, I'm telling right. you, it's already setting up the way I can, yeah. I can see the issues. All right, all right, shut up. We'll do predictions here in a minute. So, <laughs> uh, but so Sarah is showing Cam, the cop, like a, a still video. Or it's like a picture she's taken from this video. And she's like, hey, do you know this guy? It's the guy fucking her, uh, uh, her mom without the fucking her mom part of the picture. And mm. Cam is like, I'm not sure, but... I think that's Peter McBride, and he skipped town around the time your parents died. But you know that was just a coincidence, and not not a matter for law enforcement. <laughs> and so he's never been seen since. No money's been taken from his bank account, and his social security number has never been used. There's no cars registered in his name. He disappeared off the face of the planet, but we don't think that's suspicious at all. His wife had him declared dead in absentia, <laughs> but I think that may be premature. We just don't know yet. And, and then she kind of tells him, like, look, this picture was on a fuck tape I found with me and my, <laughs> my parents and this Peter McBride fella. And Cam's like, uh, I didn't know anything about that. And she's like, yeah, I, uh, I didn't think you would. But don't you think that this is, you know, a clue? And <laughs> Cam is like, hey, uh, some things are just better left undisturbed, uh, Kathy. Uh, and she's like, my name is Sarah. And he's like, whatever. I got a lot on my mind right now. <laughs> and meanwhile, back at Vera's house, she can't stop watching this video. Oh, she's she's just like. I think she's learning some things about herself, Duncan. I think she was like, this is horrible, but hot. Yeah. <laughs> I remember when he used to take me just like that. <laughs> right. And so finally she takes out the tape. And then we cut back to Sarah, who is once more walking home alone. All the time. Right. <laughs> All what, the time. What could go wrong? I've only been viciously assaulted the once. Uber existed in 2016. I'm just saying. <laughs> Not in Waterbury. <laughs> uh, maybe you get a lift. Maybe you get a lift. Yeah, like there, there's there's taxis available. Is what I'm saying, right? Yeah. You you ain't you ain't just walking everywhere. And it, it, I mean, maybe it's a tiny tiny place that you can walk everywhere. But she takes a fucking sure sweet ass time getting home here. Um, but like, yeah. So like, like, but Vera's like, like, how much did I take the Vera watch? It would appear quite a bit. All of it in a second time. I think that yeah. there were a couple like. And she lo- had to sit for the rewind on that because that's a VHS tape. Bro. She was being kind, Duncan. Every <laughs> Um, so, but yeah, so, so Sarah's walking home. She's very upset and, uh, Dylan finds her and is like, come on home, baby. And later on, he's kind of comforter, comforting her. And, uh, and she's like, 
Oh, your toy. I didn't know my father was Larry Flint. My mother was Linda <laughs> Lovelace, don't you know? A pervert is back. Um, <laughs> I wonder if Freddie was going to make an appearance. Yeah. <laughs> a pervert. <laughs> I'm shooting the video. And anyway, so Dylan is, is like, look, here's the thing. That's real fucked up. Nobody's arguing mm-hmm. that point. But it just goes to show that your parents were kind of weird and fucked up, just like everybody is. It's going to be cool. And then he takes her home, and he's like, look, baby, I know that you just found out these horrible revelations about your family, but I got to go to the paper on account of this missing kid yeah. that you, you probably forgot about. Mm. <laughs> and, and Sarah is like, should I go talk to the Vera? You know, we're kind of bonded now. What with me having seen her husband's dick and all. Yeah, this, how do you, how do you approach dick? that conversation? Like, you think about it from this, her perspective, this is how fucking broken a character she is, right? She's one, like, in the, in the career path of bad decisions, right? <laughs> Like, yeah. she's like, like every, every decision is the worst decision because she's now seen this and she's now like, well, maybe I can understand why she's been angry and said the things that she had with me. So I'm going to go across and bond with her. To let her know I've, seen, I've seen the videotape yeah. that you would think Vera probably doesn't know about. Um, and what we're going to, we're going to both bond over the fact my mum was a whore. I, I don't know. Right. At like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, at conservatively, night. <laughs> like knocking on somebody's door and being like, look, you know, you know how uh, your husband fucked my mom a bunch. I thought we might talk about it. It's uh, just, and, and how is that going to play out? It's going to play out in a great conversation. I mean, she's going to love that. I mean, it, it's just like she's going to get hit with a goddamn frying pan. <laughs> like, why? Like every, I feel like everyone that is having a conversation with Sarah in this show should be going, "No, <laughs> that's <laughs> like, a terrible like... idea." Yeah, <laughs> and, and Dylan kind of <laughs> says that he's like, "Just wait till tomorrow, okay? Yeah. Just don't do this tonight." Sleep on it's it. Late. Yeah, right. <laughs> And so he fucks uh, off to the, the, the newspaper or whatever. Which is still open at this time? Really? Even with a missing kid? Really? Yeah. Small time newspaper? Really? We got to pull an all-nighter because this kid, you know, is missing. Like, what are you writing? Yes, this missing child is still missing. Yeah, How like, long- there's no, like, there's no there's no knowledge here. The police officer was so concerned about it. He was at a dinner party. Right. It also, <laughs> it's like the development like there's no recent developments to to no. you, you, why why could you not have written this same article two hours before? Yeah, the, the development in here is that you're a key witness because you were the last one to see this kid alive. If anything, oh, yeah. that makes you a suspect. <laughs> Presumably, you left work to go find your wife, mm-hmm. like to go home and then find your wife, and you find her and are immediately like. I gotta get back to work. Like, this couple is destined for doom because neither one of them can stay around the other for two seconds. Yeah. Without being like, yeah. you need to leave, I need to leave, one of us gotta go. All I'm gonna say is COVID. Yeah. You know I mean, a COVID situation, a lockdown, they are divorced within, oh. like, a day. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's we've got a COVID fatality on our hands because of a <laughs> butcher knife. <laughs> so, so we cover o- over to Crazy Vera, who's at home drinking wine and eating candy or taking edibles or something. She's just doing everything to kill the fucking brain cells that retain the memory of the fuck tape she just watched. A hundred percent. Yeah, she is <laughs> She is doing what I call the old Hemingway scrub. Um, <laughs> and, and somebody starts ringing the doorbell, and she's just like, nobody's home. And then they just keep hammering on the doorbell. And then when she finally opens the door, no one's there, Duncan. Oh, yeah. Oh. And then later, she's like... <laughs> She's like, ah, I guess it's kids or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then she goes upstairs. She's brushing her teeth. Uh, she She's wrapping up, about to go to bed. And as she comes out of the bathroom, we <laughs> as the audience see that this executioner condom is behind her. <laughs> and she's just like, huh? Yeah. And then like slowly <laughs> turns. And there he is, of course. And then she tries to run away because she's old and fat. And he just like rushes her from behind black condom does and like throws her onto her bed and ties her hands and feet up with uh zip ties yeah this is stupid and then 
he starts sawing off one of her wrists that's tied to the bed frame. Which now means she has a free appendage. Right, well, right, she doesn't have a hand, but she does have a limb she can flail about the place. Yeah, but it's just a free just stump. Stump him to death. Yeah. <laughs> fucking stump him to death. From, like, Squirt fucking... blood into his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah! <laughs> 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 you know, but now she gets one of those cool hook hands. Um, she could have a cool hook hand. <laughs> so, which will make it even better when she's going, Your mother's a whore. <laughs> Your mother's a whore of Babylon. Arg. Arg. <laughs> and, and so we cut over to Sarah, who is watching some fake horror movie. And she pauses <laughs> because she's just <laughs> looking for pro tips, one would assume. Spoke to a serial killer, found out her mother's fuck tape, had an awful experience at a dinner party, had a fight with her husband, and now watch a horror movie to cap off the great night that is my life. I, you know, in the house that my parents were murdered in. As much as I love horror movies in that scenario, I'm going for a light comedy. I just am. Yeah, sure. you're watching fucking you're like mindless comedy. Anything that is guaranteed to get a chuckle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And, like you do not screw <laughs> fucking stupid show. Uh, yeah, I want to watch something that's gonna really get my blood pressure up. Oh uh, man. So she she pauses the movie to go uh look out the window and she hears somebody screaming. Because that's the other thing, like Vera is loud and she's getting her limbs like <laughs> Oh god, he's killing me. He's killing me. He sawed off my arms and my feet. <laughs> huh? I think somebody's in trouble. Get over here. <laughs> He's got one of my hands and feet off already. She's using her stumpy arms as some of her signal. She's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to, oh. like, like throw blood on the window to say, is to spell out <laughs> SOS. Just like, Splat, splat. Oh, it's man. like getting stranded on a beach and making an SOS with shells. And anyway, like a good neighbor, uh, Sarah goes to get involved, which I would never do, Duncan. I don't no, care how long you phone the fucking yes. phone the five zero. <laughs> yeah, a police. Hoi toy toy, police. Um, and anyway, so she sees oh. Sarah sees somebody moving behind the curtains uh, in the upstairs of the McBride house. And so she g goes to the porch and she rings the bell and she's like, Vera, Vera. And <laughs> what has become of you? Doesn't anybody else here feel the way I do? That's <laughs> Pink Floyd. Anyway, so she she's calling Vera's name and then she sees somebody behind the door and she's like, why aren't you saying something, Vera? Open up the door. And <laughs> then th this strange figure turns a lock and she's like, boy, you're, you're acting sure enough like that strange figure that stalked me on the streets last night <laughs> and maybe murdered my parents. And then she lets herself in mm -hmm. and then the, the executioner dude is gone, but inside she finds Vera upstairs with like her hands and feet cut off dead. Right. And she turns yeah. around and there's dark rubber and she is like, Oh, and falls down the stairs in panic. <laughs> yep. And the killer's just like, oh, god damn it. And just like walks down the steps, <laughs> crawls over, drops the video, the Peter McBride videotape on her belly as she's all passed yeah. out on the stairs. And it's just like, do, 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 and just gets out of there. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to die in this episode. <laughs> oh, this is yeah. awkward. We weren't supposed to have this conversation until later on, episode four. <laughs> You're a little early. <laughs> uh, so Sarah wakes up in the hospital and kind of wakes up to Dylan talking to some doctor. And the, this cop is like, I've got to take your statement because uh, you were the last person to, you know, to see Vera McBride. And she's like, it was the executioner. It was. Oh, Faith and Begora. It was the killer what killed my mom and dad. And <laughs> they're just like, oh, this, this chick is crazy. Like yeah. she is. She has straight up slipped a disc. We are done here. <laughs> and then we meet Marjorie Duncan, mm. who is this haggard prostitute that lives in Waterbury. Ugh. And she just comes staggering along the sidewalk, smoking while Cam is like outside, about to get in his car. 
and he's a see uniform. anything you like. Yeah, and it, it's just <laughs> it is, and uh, a cigarette in her hand, <laughs> and <laughs> and she's just like, so you see that executioner tonight, and he's like, what are you talking about? And she's like, you know what I'm talking about. Word gets around. I was outside that woman's window when we're chanta. Yeah. And Cam is like, where'd you hear that? That's special police information. And she's just like, yeah, where it gets around in Waterbury. And I, she's like, I heard Vera McBride was dead. God rest her soul. It, it's like the most sarcastic God rest her soul I've ever heard. And then, like every character in this movie, because we never leave a scene without a character leaving it. Well, that's, that's the classic. It's a, a trope of a what do you call it? Sitcoms. Sitcoms will will regularly close a scene with someone leaving the room. Yeah, that's how you conversation over. Right there, there's. <laughs> it's like literally how script script right uh, screenwriters write things like uh, open scene man walks into room you close scene is person leaves room <laughs> it's like, but that's literally they're doing it every scene it's like, that's, 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 well that's the close the scene <laughs> yeah yeah it's just, it, there's never a scene that's just like we we get to a dramatic moment and then we just move to another scene yeah it is yeah. like get to a dramatic moment and then somebody slowly leaves the scene and then you leave with it but in this case it's cam who's just like People, get, our listeners might not know that. that's how this podcast finishes every single episode one right. of us leaves <laughs> we, one of us just eventually is like ah, and then wanders yeah. out and yeah <laughs> and and so cam fucks off out of this scene which allows us to leave it mm. and then we we cut over to dylan who is arriving for work the next morning and allison is telling the entire staff like Take up every everything you can on this Vera McBride, and he's like, "Is that my job? Maybe." <laughs> I need to search every in house, out house, barn house, dog house. <laughs> I need a a hard target search. Uh, <laughs> and Dylan is like, "Look, I understand why you're excited about this, but my wife is not the story." And Allison immediately immediately is like, "Bull to the shit, she's not." <laughs> you know, so, like, Are she's you been kidding? back. She's been back one day. Our child's went missing. The executioners come back, and our crazy neighbor's dead. <laughs> right. It's like Barlow moved into the Marston house around here. <laughs> We're losing kids and people left and right. No, like, the master. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, back, no, police. Master. Back, shaman. <laughs> uh, and and so. Now, Duncan, we have kind of a montage scene, which is Vera's funeral, which happens in shocking swiftness. Yeah, I mean, like, there's there's because, well, there's no CSI department. <laughs> well, not just that, but, like, bodies have to be processed and prepared. And, They've and sewed kind of... them back on. It's closed casket. In fact, it's... they're probably stuffed at the side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, just, it's the box they found the videotapes in. They just toss <laughs> her in that. They're going to bury that out at the at the symmetry. And so Reverend Silver Fox, um, who we later <laughs> learn is Alan from the, the previous uh yeah, or, or like like, the he episode. A bit too much like a Russian like assassin than he does <laughs> like a priest. Yeah, he looks like an agent, uh, like an assassin being called out of retirement for yeah, one last he looks, go. It looks like someone that's been hired by some villain to kill Bond. <laughs> like, <laughs> yes, yes. If he had a cat that he was stroking at the same time, you know. Oh, he, yeah, he went up to the pulpit, and what I expected here was, dun, 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 dun. like, <laughs> literally, he took over school. He shouldn't be like, that church should be packed with people who are, like, listening to every word that Silver Fox has to say. Yeah. Oh, oh you know there are plenty of, like, widowed wives out there that are bringing Reverend Silver Fox like, plenty of every casseroles. Every sermon, every sermon begins with, when I survived that night of murder. Yeah. When I Every got this one. scar. Like... <laughs> the, night, the night I faced a murder and got this scar. Yeah. You know um, who got me through? Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus got me through. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> High five. And yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Also, why is he blind in that eye? The cop was below the yeah, eye. Yeah, I think that was a separate incident. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I think he's just got real bad luck on the left side of his face. 
That was that was when uh when Cam was a kid and got a BB gun for Christmas. <laughs> so uh but at, so Reverend Silver Fox is talking to his son, Cam, it turns out, mm-hmm. and is like, Hey, uh, you gotta catch this killer, and Kemp's like, We're trying, shut up. <laughs> Do your job. I'm trying, you big jerk. And uh, then the Reverend Silver Fox gives a sermon about how we're all born in sin. And then we do this montage where we see like Justin in bed rolling over to do some blow. Mm-hmm. And then when he rolls back, we get the reveal that like he's in bed with Robin and a couple of other dudes. Mm-hmm. So they're having a good time. God bless them. That's the party you want to be at. That's what we said earlier on. Right. The crazy lady we saw at the beginning uh, yelling about Muriel. We see her staring at some kid's picture. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marjorie, the the town hooker, gives Cam a blowjob. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dylan um, is blacklighting or uh, the the hallway to see all the blood stains in, in the hallway, which sure enough are all over the place. This place has been shittily <laughs> cleaned, of course. <laughs> and so we kind of round this out with with our Tim Winston killer character getting another visit from Sarah. And this is where we move full Hannibal Lecter. A hundred percent where she's like, listen, this killer, is he some kind of protege of yours? Are you working with him? Do you know him? And he's like, listen, Sarah, I'm cut off from the world. You can, you can ask the, the warden about that. Yeah. I have no access to email. I rarely read my letters. What you have to figure out is not how vera was killed oh, this is, yeah. but why you have to ask yourself sarah why did vera die in that way yeah he asks if she's got any pictures and i'm like that oh, oh dear god we're not going to this road right Can i get five minutes with the case file <laughs> closer <laughs> well, i know the picture's right in front of you closer closer um <laughs> and and she says uh you know, back in Saudi Arabia, they they'd cut off your hands for stealing. Maybe it's because you stole the fucking tape. Yeah, and and he's like, "Oh no, Sarah, you <laughs> it's came so in here. sloppy. It won't do. I won't do." <laughs> you came in here. You were honest and forthright, and <laughs> now you leap to such a silly conclusion. Oh no, 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 Sarah, that, that will never do. <laughs> never do. <laughs> and uh, so after after all this business, she actually is like. I'll help you catch him, Sarah. I mean, Clarice. <laughs> I'll make you famous. Yeah. It, I mean, it is It, it is 100%. You I sent will now the hunt. worms. Yeah. Uh, um, yes, it is studied how much they rip it off. And then to top off the episode, we see our killer in mm. full costume doodling murder drawings on his trapper keeper and shit. Because why not? You know, this this outfit, some people think this outfit is purely for murder, but I like to think it's functional for a round the house drawing. Just hanging out and the pictures are so fucking like completely, completely childish. It's yeah, like it, like it's like they've ripped off like the 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 drawings that Patrick Bateman does in his book that is secretary finds. You know what I mean? Like yeah. where it's just clearly the drawings of a mad person. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like the, 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 it's shit. It's like stick figures with blood coming at the bottom. <laughs> like it's, it's fucking awful. But he's just at home doodling in that costume, which doesn't look like he'd be comfortable. Um, and why? And uh, and hot, just hot, Duncan. It must be, must be. Like th- there is that there hood. Is, that's well, that not like dry. latex and rubber and shit. That's yeah, gotta be hot as shit. It's not porous. It's not porous at no. all. And then the outfit he's wearing, it like is giant and it covers everything and it looks heavy and it's black and he's wearing gloves. Yeah. And at home while he's drawing like pictures of bombers dropping bombs on the people mm-hmm. he's killed and stuff, it is infantile and head scratching. And if this killer is not somehow like mentally handicapped, then I've got serious questions about the state of affairs of this show um, <laughs> that's that's the point at which bo is going to call bill to the shit everything else i totally buy this crazy uh this crazy hannibal lecter rip off the bad irish accent all that stuff totally on board uh but yeah the this uh schoolyard drawings that the our killer is doing is it's, nonsense. it's baffling it really really is um so guys 
uh that is it for episode one of of slasher um let's take a, a, a brief second here to talk about predictions because <laughs> i've only seen this second episode so i know one thing that happens that yeah, I remember. you know one more thing than i do and right. i'll be 100 percent honest i have not done any research on this show at no. all why would in fact the That's... first time i was on imdb was right as we started to record so i've even kind of hidden myself from all that yeah so yeah it's not um, what we do no, no. So we will be. I know you probably already know where the show goes because you watched it, or you know, or you googled it. Because I, you can, I no, we I don't. We don't. You know what I mean? Like as listeners, you've done all that. We have not. So we are like we're in a time machine back in 2016, watching this for the first time. Um, predictions. Uh, my my quick prediction was that um, what's his face was not the killer uh, at all and being wrong wrongfully convicted. Uh, but then of course, quick, yeah. I then quickly went back on that because I thought, like, time-wise, that wouldn't make sense because the killer would have to be, like, considerably older, um, which then made me think, potentially, the Reverend, but then he's got a fucking obvious assassin's eye. Uh, like, so, you know, like, if we ever see any close-up of the killer's face, that's a, that is something that you would recognise, well, one of his eyes was white. Um, I mean... I, I, I'm I'm thinking potentially the cop, um, but it might be a character we've not even met yet. I I like him as a suspect. I I think Dylan is an out of the realm of possibility for this dumb show. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I also think that it could happen that, that Peter McBride was the original killer. No, that wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, and and might have even come back, or it could be that Cam is following in his father's footsteps uh yeah uh so at any rate we'll all of this will uh un unveil itself uh, as time goes on um i think it is completely ridiculous and that's why i enjoy watching it because it, it's uh, it's so bafflingly poorly written but also uh enough happens that it's not it's not boring and bad three three vicious deaths in this episode yeah 50 so, minutes and three vicious deaths so that's all like and they're, they're spaced out nicely so you get that one at the beginning then there's one about the 20 minute mark and then there's one about the 40 minute mark you have my attention that's all, literally yeah. all you have to do Every episode does give me a death every 20 minutes and I'll stick along with it. And you kill a child with a baseball bat and drag him into the woods and I appreciate that as well. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, the, t the town doesn't give a fuck about it, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the town couldn't care less. Like the newspaper is the only, uh, the only people on the Why job. is there not like a wailing parent at the door of the police station going, why have you not found my right. son? Like a Mrs. Kettner, like, you know. Yeah, yeah, we cut open this executioner and that Kettner boy spills out. <laughs> He's, i guess a cannibal in this scenario um but all right so look folks let me let me say a couple of things up front uh first thank you as always for listening uh if you would like to join in and watch uh you can do so at uh, uh legion podcast uh, god damn it i always fuck this up you can do you can do this at, now listen folks listen, listen folks l all right let, <laughs> like you brought their attention to your mistake you, say, you made a mistake there bowl yeah for Duncan. <laughs> <laughs> click so, so you can go to youtube.com forward slash legion podcast uh facebook.com forward slash legion podcast and uh twitch.tv forward slash leads legion podcast and uh we will try to make all of the schedule known uh and if for some reason uh you would like to really be in the know uh drop me a line at bow at legion podcasts.com and if you send me an email and you're like hey i want to know when you guys go live uh, first of all, you can just subscribe to the the Twitch channel or the YouTube channel, and you'll get an alert. Um, but if you want to know and you don't want to do those things, uh, like I said, drop me a line. I'm, I'm more than happy to put together a mailing list to let you know. Um, but this was fun. I had a good time doing it on uh, on the video. I think we will uh, continue doing this at least through this season, and then we'll see where it goes. Because this is just day one. There's all kinds of dumb shit that we can add <laughs> to the visual yeah. component of this. This and was just to see if it would work. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me, yeah. Like if you if you know Duncan and Bo come correct, as well as I know Duncan and Bo come correct, that um, see once like the the idea box is open, very much like Pandora's box, there ain't no shutting it. So yeah, it's like okay, well the, the technology now that we've established that all of this seems to have worked fine. Now it's a question of how do we make this dumber? Yes, and, and we will. Trust me, hundred you percent. <laughs> like you're in capable hands. Uh, so. 
So, <laughs> so, but we're not trying to change the format too awful no. much so that if you're only listening to the audio portion of this, you're not going to miss that much. I mean, a couple of little, uh, obviously the charades joke and stuff like that, but, yeah. uh, but you don't have to watch the video, but if you do, uh, we hope you enjoy that too. And, and we'll be doing some more fun stuff and, uh, can incorporate chat and that kind of thing into it as time goes on. Uh, at any rate, uh, thanks for all that stuff. Uh, be sure that you are uh, subscribing to the show on iTunes or wherever it is that you get uh, your podcast. Uh, Duncan and Bo come correct. It all falls under that umbrella. Um, I, if you search for slash fiction, that's probably going to lead you to some other places. But <laughs> uh, much like Vera, you might learn some things about yourself. Um, and, or your and, partner, <laughs> or yes, or your partner. And uh, and if you uh, if you want to hear more out of me, then legionpodcast.com You can check out Pick Six Movies and a bunch of other shows over there uh, that include me, and some don't. And some uh, some of the ones that include me are still good, and the ones that don't are uh, are much better as a result. Um, and f- for you, Duncan, where uh, should people uh, want a little more out of you? Yeah, well, d- just to echo everything that Bo said, thank you very much for joining us on this maiden outage uh, <laughs> on on doing some video stuff. I, I've had a ton of fun doing it. I'm looking forward to continuing through this really shitty show. <laughs> like, can't, can't wait for it. I hope you all had a fantastic New Year and Christmas as well. Um, if you do want to check out the stuff that I do, uh, Podcast Under the Stairs will be returning Monday the 11th of January. That's as officially kicking back into regular output from a two-week kind of hiatus however in the meantime uh, I did drop a special bonus episode on podcast under the stairs where I interviewed uh, Hami Balayero and Paco Plaza the directors behind Rick uh, great episode was, so good uh, was, they, they are legitimately amazing people so please go and check it out it's, a, it's just an interview it's 25 minutes uh, and it was a ton of fun and a humbling experience chatting and to those guys so uh yeah please check that out a uh, podcast under the stairs wherever you listen to podcasts or tputzcast.com excellent and uh speaking of video stuff uh i'm under the impression that if you go to uh, twitch.tv forward slash tputzcast <laughs> uh there will there will shortly be videos of uh of you playing and also if you go if you subscribe have you to played blair witch i like, have played but uh, there's a stream of me playing blair witch is it good uh it's interesting it's kind of neat is it going to scare the shit? I don't handle horror games well. I handle horror yeah, movies. It'll well, scare. I do not handle horror games well. So it, right. It, I mean, it's a game that puts you out in the woods at night alone with only a flashlight oh. and a dog. <laughs> and, and but, but you can. Here's the thing, Duncan. You can pet that dog anytime you want in the game. Oh well, that's perfect. I'm it's, just going to spend the whole game doing that. <laughs> I, I I spent a good portion of it. Yeah. Just doing a whole lot of good boys. Who's a good boy? Who's a who's who's a good witch hunting boy? Um, so you can check that out. And also if you subscribe to the uh, Legion podcast, Twitch channel, uh, if we are not broadcasting, you will also be seeing, uh, Duncan play Blair, Witch. I'm going to watch it Sunday night. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I hope you do too. Cause this, the, this, this show should drop, uh, Sunday morning because kind of because of the nature of doing it live like this, there's not a whole lot of editing to be done. So see, Bo gets it. He knows. Think, thinking ahead. Uh, so anyway, uh, thanks to everybody again for, uh, for watching and listening and participating and just being part of the Duncan and Bo come correct stuff. Cause we have a great time, uh, doing this and, and mm-hmm. we hope you do too. And so, and it seems like mo- at least some of you do, uh, I was going to say most, but then I backed off that. That seems, <laughs> that seems presumptive. A bold statement. <laughs> yeah. Like man, most over 50%. Eh, that seems like, that, that's a lot. Um, I don't know that we've got a quorum on, uh, on this show being great but we should um so there's nothing left to do uh but to ask uh my friend duncan here to say good night duncan <laughs> oh, God. God. that was a visual gag of me yeah. walking away without answering them. <laughs> a good night duncan ah!